What's up, Internet? How y'all doing tonight? Today. I guess it's today. Yeah, it's 122 in the Central Time Zone, so definitely today. What a beautiful day out here in Alabama. Finally, we've had a bunch of rain, and it is uh, blue skies. It's not super warm, but it's nice outside. Uh, the Auburn Tigers victorious. Yeah, it's tough to kind of feel super good about that, right? I mean, they play great. Uh, man, open the game on a torrid start. Hit all those threes. Uh, they start the second half. Great start there. More twos and good defense. And you're like, they're going to crush this team. And then the next thing you know, like, they kind of go power down there and last, let's say, four minutes of the game. And it got close. It got real close. Some bad decisions being made during those uh, the last four minutes or so. But, uh, you know. They, uh, they they pulled it out and did some good stuff for sure. Fat Crack jumps in to start with. My man. Starts off with a boom. Let's go, JGT. All right, Fat Crack. Appreciate you, bro. Always here, man. Every single show. Outstanding. Thank you for your support, sir. Uh, Yeah, so I felt like we were kind of on the verge of this being like a huge win. Like, like one of those wins where you're like, damn, they really blew the doors off that team. And. You know, you look at Iowa State and they're nine and nine, and you're like, eh. but those of us, I mean, you guys that follow college basketball, you know Iowa State's good, and they're just trying to get their pieces together. And now that you've seen them play, they are good. They just have some defensive troubles. Uh, those guys can score, and uh, the work that Auburn did today on Halliburton, big time, big time. And you got to give Samir credit, and you got to give Isaac credit. Those two guys are basically switching off on him all day, and. And uh, he didn't. He didn't do much. I think he finished with twelve ish, something like that. Let's see if I can get the box score up here. So Tyrese Halliburton finishes with twelve on four of seven shooting. Only gets seven shots. Uh, I was looking through his Ken Palm before we got on the air, and uh, usually he's a guy that scores. I don't know a little bit more than twelve. Uh, usually about sixteen or so, but in the last let's say fifteen games. Um, he's been shut out or shut down by Baylor and Kansas. Now, I would not say 12 points is shut down, but those of you who watched the game would know that he wasn't he wasn't a big factor in this game. I thought that uh, number 45 was the guy that they had to worry about who was extremely quick. Uh, he also got himself into foul trouble there in the second half and still managed to play it out. Even with foul trouble, he was still tearing that ass up. Very, very quick guards. But uh, I thought Samir and O'Coral did an outstanding job on Halliburton. He's uh, he's a big time player, guys. They had, I think, eight scouts there tonight, maybe ten. Sometimes they slide in there late, um, and they were there to see Halliburton and and Okoro as well. But I think Halliburton is almost for sure going to be a lottery pick type player, six foot five point guard, um, and he has incredible quickness. It's just that uh, Auburn was geared up to slow him down tonight, and they took the ball out of his hands for the most part. Hey, you taxman notes, we shot at twice as many threes in the first half than we did in the second. Yeah, I just thought that it was getting a little out of control in the first half, right? I mean, I was shocked that Auburn, well, first of all, they were hitting them, and second of all, they were taking them. I mean, the three-point shot, I think their first eight shots of the game were threes, which is not what you would expect from an Auburn team that doesn't shoot the three very well. But it was working, and they were going to ride that out until it cooled off, and it did cool off. And uh, when it did, they went to something else. That's what you do. I thought Auburn was really good today in transition, and I thought they were really good when they were getting sets from the sideline and Javon was getting them to run it, and they would run it. You could kind of see most of it was to exploit uh, the way that Iowa State was switching off guard screens. And so they were – I remember there was a bucket in the first half where they ran a ball screen with uh, Jamal came high post, and they switched off of Samir – and then he was he just rolled down the lane. And that was just a, uh, a play set up to exploit Iowa State switching. And they did that all day. Canoe Man says, nice shirt, JGT. I appreciate you, bro. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. I got my pink tie on today and all that stuff. Usually I wear the white shirt, but I was changing it up today. I felt a little this blue sky stuff. Gets me pretty fired up, man. I hate cold weather, so knowing that we have this beautiful sunny day and we're getting to the end of January, and in Alabama, man, once you get to March, you can you can start banking on some warmer weather, and I just keep thinking about how close we are. 
Jazzy Joe's back again. Dang, I was like, there's no way he's coming back. But he did. Because he's Jazzy Joe and he's Jazzy AF. Appreciate you, man. Uh, TD says, you know, as many as many 11 a.m. tips as we have, why can't we be playing UK at 11 so game day can roll right into the game? Good point. Uh, that's a, something we got to talk about. Auburn's getting its first game day uh, next weekend. Uh, the Kentucky game, I think that game tips at 5. Let me go back to my schedule page here. Yes, sir. T no, tips at, yeah, 5. So that's the next game. They still got Ole Miss on Tuesday. And Ole Miss uh, has been struggling a little bit of late. But Auburn, if you remember, Aub Ole Miss was kind of up and down last year, and Auburn got spanked over there. That was the first game of the SEC season. But Ole Miss uh, has given Auburn troubles in the last however long. That's good stuff. I wish that that game was at 11 too. <laughs> Believe me, I love it. Chris says, I don't know. Alabama weather's weird. We've had snow in April. I haven't seen that. Maybe in North Alabama it could happen. I, down here it wouldn't happen. Hell, I've only seen snow probably six times since I've lived here, and I moved here in 98, so. And never really any significant snow. I mean, we've had enough to cover the grass maybe two or three times. Everybody freaks out, and they sell out of uh, bread and milk, and <laughs> it's just like, come on, man. I mean, I went to school in Kentucky, and you know, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that's north, but we had some snows there. Maybe every other year you'd have a really good, you know, 12-inch snow something like that. It would really mess stuff up. But in a way, I kind of enjoyed that because, you know, school would, would shut down or work would shut down. and I don't know. See what Nate has been tweeting about. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Nate, oh, it's a picture of BP and his granddaughter. How about that, man? With Jeff Shear in the front row, my man. That's where I sit usually. That's just great, man. BP's so fired up about being a granddad. He really is. That's great. Chris says he's a little north of Birmingham, so that makes sense. Yeah. But I'm I'm surprised. I mean, I thought you would have been, like, on the Tennessee border, like in Rogers, toward Florence, Muscle Shoals, or something like that. Uh, speaking of which, of course, we've always, we've always got uh, bourbon business going on. Today's bourbon is going to be the Kentucky Vintage, which is uh, not exactly a celebrated bourbon. Um, allegedly, so this is made by Willett. You don't know that from looking at the bottle because it doesn't say that anywhere. It says that it is bottled uh, by Kentucky Vintage Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. But I know for a fact this is uh, this is a Willet product, and uh, I think it's their bottom of the line, and it's not it's not very ryeish at all. But um, my wife had a taste test of this when we went to the distillery, and she loved it, so we snagged it. Uh, I know for a fact they had a couple bottles of this at Chart Oak Spirits at the Auburn location there near Louie's because um, I was in there the other day, and uh, I was surprised. I didn't know that you could get that outside of Kentucky. Pour us a little something-something in our, Willet, our little Willet glass here. If you can see that, you probably can't, but it's, it's a Willet glass. Company man, and we'll uh, enjoy this. Kentucky Vintage. AJ says, three years ago I had about 11 inches of snow in Chilton County. I believe it was in March. Wow, is that true? I don't remember that. I mean, Chilton County's not that far from me. What's that, two counties up? Clanton? Willett does that with several of their brands. Yeah, you're right. Like the old Bardstown, you wouldn't really know it's Willett. It does say it on the bottle, but it's in like small type. You know, most people just think it's Willett and then the family whatever they call it, the family rye. It's that purple and green bottle. Let's see. Scott says, hello, all. I am a Georgia fan. I have time to waste. <laughs> uh, I hope you're being funny about that, that Georgia sucks in basketball. They don't suck in football, that's for sure. But uh, welcome, Scott. It's nice to have you. I will be honest. I've said a lot of mean things about Georgia fans through the years on this show and other places, but uh, I'm going to be on my best behavior because I'm going to assume that you're going to be all right. And if you're not, I'm going to get really mad and say bad things about Georgia fans again. <laughs> uh, all right, let's keep talking about this basketball game. First of all, Fat Crack with another super chat. Thank you. Unbelievable. Says, JG, what was DP thinking? Taking that three late in the game, absolutely unbelievable. Yes, you're right. It was unbelievable. Uh, what was it, about a minute left? 
They had essentially a full shot clock. It's probably 20, what, 25 seconds, 28 seconds. And, yes, Johnny Drum. Good point, AU Tax, man. That's another one. I don't like Johnny Drum at all. But, yeah, they kind of hide that, don't they? And Pure Kentucky, too. I didn't even know about Pure Kentucky until I was up there. And I was like, what the hell is this? Huh. Uh, going back, so D, uh, DP is Dangel. Uh, really bad, bad decision to shoot that three, right? I mean, really, really bad. Um, but I'll just say, man, that's that's kind of Dangel. I mean, he's kind of a hot and cold dude. If he's feeling ambitious, ball's going up. And I don't think he thinks about time management or anything like that. He's just kind of out there going at it. And um, I don't know. I mean, if you're looking for high basketball IQ, I, I don't think you're looking at Dangel right off, okay? I mean, you're just not. You're probably looking at Samir, and you're probably looking at Jamal, and you're probably looking at maybe Ant. Maybe Javon, although Javon gets a little weird. Uh, Matthew M., last name redacted, says, Afternoon, Mr. Tate. How you doing, sir? It's nice to see you. And, of course, thank you for the extra effort that you have given my family in the past However long, four years, almost four years. You do a hell of a job. You know I feel like you know how I feel about you. Hmm. All right, so to me that's a good solid bourbon. A little bit of burn. Hmm. Kind of a longer finish than I expected for such a cheap and I should say inexpensive bourbon. Um, definitely sweet. 90 proof, so the burn's not too bad. Kind of weeded to me. I mean, th that's a rye distillery. Willet is all about rye. I mean, Johnny Drum probably on the far end of the rye. Rowan Creek is way on the end of rye. This tastes a little less rye, but whatever. Solid bourbon. Again, if you want some, if you want to try it, um, they have it at Chardo Oak Spirits right now. And they're not even paying me or anything. I know the guy who owns Charter Experience is a bunker member, though. So I feel like we're keeping it in the family, you know. Oh, yeah, Solo. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, Isaac's B-Ball IQ is way up there. Absolutely. Um, Isaac makes a lot of really smart plays. That's one of the reasons you can see Isaac uh, change in his role in the middle of a game. Like in the last game, right? So I think of Isaac myself as a slasher. I think that's how he's going to make his money. Um he can shoot too, and I'm sure that's going to be an evolving part of his game, but I don't really think of him as a sharpshooter right now. But if you remember in the last game, they kind of repurposed him as a drive and kick guy because, as you mentioned, he's smart with the ball in his hands, and he just kind of has the athletic ability to wiggle into, sm into spots and get into places that maybe Samir doesn't have the agility to get into. And so he can adjust his game and become a distributor like that. He had six assists in that last game. It's crucial. So, yeah, very, very high IQ for him. Absolutely. Let's see. We got some other all-stars in the show here. Uh, I mentioned Solo Tiger. Obviously, Canoe Man's in the house. Jazzy Joe, of course, one of our superstars. Nick S., frequent super chatter Nick S., says, yo, yo. What up, man? How you doing, bro? Dan Webb's with us again. <laughs> Chazzy D's Spectacular Moments is with us as well. It says, game day at the jungle next Saturday. We are officially in basketball school. Hey, yeah, weren't before when you hit the Final Four, but now, yeah. Okay. Canoe Man notes that Johnny Drum, Noah's Hill, and Rowan's Creek are other examples of Willet brands that they bottle under pretend labels. Yeah, you're right. I don't really, I hadn't really thought about why they do that. They probably just do it to kind of vary it a little bit. So it's not all just Willet, 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 the way that Old Forester does. But I will note also that that is an incredibly small operation at Willet. I've mentioned this before on the show. 40 employees for the whole thing. That includes the girls in the gift shop. That includes the accountants. I would assume that includes the groundskeepers. Um, the whole group. So it's a very small operation. Anyway. Um, oh, wow. A.U. Texman says, open a bottle of Wilderness Trail last night. I am not familiar with that bourbon. Fantastic. Sounds good. Dan says, <laughs> Okoro is a muscle that can move. Indeed. He is something. Uh, other points from the game that I wanted to mention with you guys, we talked about a few of them. Uh, I thought the defense on Halliburton was crucial, uh, mostly due to Samir and Isaac. 
uh, just changing up on him and staying up on him and not letting him do anything comfortably. They didn't give him any room. They were challenging passes. They went all the way out past the three-point line with him. Uh, a lot of effort put into that, and uh, I think it yielded some results. Had it not been uh, for the other guard, Iowa State would have been sunk. But the other guard was really good too. Uh, Auburn had 14 turnovers. Um, that's a high total considering that they had a lot of possessions that I thought were easy. They were straightforward possessions that wouldn't have created a turnover unless you were really trying. Um, they were good in transition today. And again, they were good in sets when they were set up and running them, which, as we've talked about before, doesn't happen enough. And I don't know why. We had a long conversation about this on the bunker that BP will make calls or whoever, Steven or whoever's making the call, and they won't. One way or another, it doesn't get run. Now, is that because D'Angel gets mindless and just kind of goes off script? And same for Samir. Or does Javon need to be more authoritarian about it and say, let's get in position. You get over here, you get over here. It shouldn't be that way in late January, but you know how it goes. I don't understand why there's this communication breakdown. Uh, today, it wasn't a huge deal. In my mind, I think they were running a lot of the stuff they were supposed to, but there were times when they weren't. And when they do that, they tend to get bogged down, and that's when they turn the ball over because they get themselves into bad situations. They get stuck in the corner. They get <laughs> they roll off a screen into two guys. They do a lot of dumb stuff when they're just rolling. And um, I think BP gets really, really fed up with it. But if there, again, as I mentioned on the bunker, if there was an easy solution to this problem, they would have fixed it by now. I don't know what the problem is. A uh, great start for Auburn. Couldn't believe that their first eight shots were all threes, but that's the way it went down. Uh, got themselves up, I think. Let's see, they were down 6-0, and then they were up 12-6. That's kind of how it goes when you start hitting shots from three-point range. So, great start to the game. And they got up, they got that 10-point lead, and they just kind of kept it. Uh, ooh, we got a super chat from Nick S. again, my man. I was trying to slot over and see the other night at uh, one of our favorite watering holes, the Tipping Point. But uh, you yeah, had a game, had a game going on. But thank you, sir, for your consistent support of the show. You're the man. I know you love some bourbon too. I don't know if you've had this Kentucky vintage. It's good. I mean, it's solid bourbon. It's inexpensive too. Like we talk on the bunker about, oh, what what's this? I had this great bourbon that was like two hundred dollars a bottle, and I mean that stuff's great. But tell me something that's good at twenty five. You know, this is good at twenty five. Evan Williams, single barrel, really good at 25. Mm. Yeah. All right, so great start to the game. Uh, great start in the second half, shooting twos. They really weren't shooting threes at that point. They got up by about 18, not too long after the second half started. And it looked like they were just going to pull this thing out, just run it out. And they kind of slowed down again and got away from the things that were making them successful in the first place. They didn't shoot a lot of threes in the second half. I think they were one of, ah, let me get the numbers up. I was thinking one of six, one of seven, one of eight, something like that. Uh, second half, one of eight, so 13%. Not not so good. But that wasn't really, an, they weren't accentuating that part of the game. They were trying to run sets to take advantage of those screens, uh, the way that Iowa State switches off screens. <laughs> Jen, Jen, Jen and Dave Odom jump in and says, finally made one of these some bitches live. They were actually trying to uh, block your comment because of that. I uh, love the show. Four Roses guy myself. Smooth and cheap. Kevin is the best coach we have. He deserves that big money. War Eagle baby. Switching gears there. Talking about Kevin Steele a little bit. Uh, got a new deal worth about $2.5 million per year. Highest paid assistant in college football. And um, I think he's a total badass. I think he's worth every penny. I know a lot of you guys feel the same way. We were fussing a little bit during the season that maybe Auburn's defense wasn't quite as elite as we thought it was. But I don't know. I mean, we could fight about that all day, but we can all agree that it was pretty damn good. Um, whether or not it was elite, I don't know. But Kevin's done a lot. He's done a lot. I think his he's got guys on his staff that understand which kids to go after and which ones not to. And, I mean, their bust percentage has definitely dropped in the last three or four years. And they get a lot out of their players. You can see players getting better on that side of the ball. And you can go into next year with a few exceptions, feeling like they've got plans at every spot. 
I personally don't trust the defensive tackle situation very much because they're going to have to get a lot out of either Tyrone, Truesdell, or Daquan, or Connors. One of those three guys is going to have to be like Dontavious level player, and I just don't know who it's going to be. Now, it could be one of these other guys that we're not thinking about, Derek Hall, Jaron Handy, who's playing outside. I, I don't know if he's going to stay outside. Um, you know, is Jay, the kid from Chattanooga coming in? I, he thinks he's going to be an end. I think he's going to be a three-tech. But, again, I, I, is he going to be ready for this fall? I doubt it. So, anyway, I'm getting down in the weeds a little bit. But Kevin got the big deal, and uh, Jen and Dave Odom think that was a hell of a deal, and I, I don't disagree. Nick says, uh, Woodford Reserve was tasty the other night. That's always a solid bourbon. Never anything wrong with Woodford Reserve. It's not really my thing, but it's good. It's tasty. He also says Dowdy seems to be more effective when he takes it to the hole on a con on a consistent basis instead of jacking up nine threes a game. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think Samir thinks of himself as a step back three guy. And I don't know if that's really where he belongs. But they're letting him do it and I guess he does enough of that to make them happy. I'm trying to figure this one out. Johnny B. Good says, serious question. Why do our fans not understand that winning at home is necessary and winning on the road a major bonus? Hmm. Well, I mean, the short answer is that, you know, Auburn fans are still kind of new to basketball by and large. And you can tell sometimes when you're watching the games because – there's times when it would be appropriate to really get up on your feet and go crazy. I know today an example would have been late in the half, first half. It's it's time to get rowdy, and they didn't do it. They just kind of sit there. Now, they do some of that at Rupp Arena, at least back when I was a student, because they had all the old people down low, and they didn't really get into it unless it was like Arkansas back in those days or something. But anyway, uh, we also got a super chat from Sparrow Empire who also is with us like every show. Thank you very much, Sparrow Empire. One of our Hall of Fame super chatters. Thank you very much. Uh, says, really wish Bruce would stop asking the guys to eat shot clock when we build a solid lead. Seems like we always let the opponent back in the game. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's because he's trying to get them to throttle down or that's... Be because they're not following the the calls? I I don't know. It's kind of complicated. I, I'm not sure on that one. I think it makes sense to kind of eat clock if you're up 15 with eight minutes to go. Or at least start winding down a little bit. But maybe this team can't handle that. They can't handle that change of pace. It, it requires a mental adjustment. See, Canoe Man, I, I agree with you. He says, because we're not a basketball school yet. About... Why can fans not understand? You got to win at home, and winning on the road's a bonus. Again, I think it's the whole football thing. They're just thinking like football play, football fans, which is fine. That's what they've been. Uh, spread attack U eighteen says wife calls that report <laughs> calls it the report card on the left. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on the bunker earlier. Uh, so the box score, his wife calls it the report card, which it kind of is, really. I mean, it's it, it kind of tells the tale, doesn't it? Um, let's see, Jamal comes off the bench for a three like he does. I bet you that's eight consecutive games he's done that. Only gets eight minutes today, though, primarily because uh, the defensive matchups for him were not favorable at all. Halliburton and Bolton are way too quick for Jamal to be guarding, so that's probably why he kept his numbers low. Uh, same for Devin. 14 minutes coming off that night he had the other night is not a lot. And if you remember, BP said, I asked him about it uh, in the press conference, You know, because Devin went crazy the other night when he had 26 I said, does this mean he's going to play more? And BP was like, it's kind of a cumulative thing. We assess the kids on a long-term basis rather than what they did last night or two nights ago because we don't want them to feel like they've got to go balls out and be incredible every single night because there's some nights it's just not going to happen. We don't want to make them feel anxiety over it. Makes a lot of sense to me. Devin's defense is just so-so right now. I think he's going to get better at that. So they had to keep him out too. So your, your guards... Your primary uh, high defenders, Okoro and, and Dowdy, played more minutes than normal, 32 and 31. And then Javon gets 31 as well. It's a lot of minutes for them. 
Anyway, we got a uh, super chat come in from Spread Attack U18, one of our Hall of Famers. Yes, thank you very much, Spread Attack. Appreciate you. Says, love you, Jay. Keep up the great work. Don't know if it's been discussed, but how terrible was that three by Dan Jill at the end? Man, oh, man. Yes. What, about a minute to go? 25 seconds on the shot clock. Just slow the ball down. Slow it down. Let's hold it. Get it to the end of the shot clock and see what happens. Or go to the line. With uh, As Sonny likes to talk about, dead ball points. Auburn let Iowa State back in this game with dead ball points. It's driving Sonny crazy. But there is some virtue in what he's saying. Uh, yes. Dangel, spread attack. Sometimes his basketball IQ is low, and sometimes he gets just a little uh, headstrong. He's like, I want to score right now, and so I'm going to score. And that's not good for the team. Sometimes it's fine for the team, but in that situation, it was bad for the team. Let's see. What else we got going on? Sparrow Empire. Didn't understand that. Hold on. Cass DL3 says 64 bourbons under $30. Semifinals number four. This sounds like a tournament I would be very interested in, but uh, I don't know what it, what you're talking about. Doug Dozier says, Iowa State was the worst defensive team we've played all year. Um, I'm trying to think. No, I would say that uh, that team from California had run our test son was worse. Good God. That was the worst defensive team I may have ever seen. Uh, Cal State Northridge, I think it was. They were horrible. Uh, but Iowa State, to me, was just kind of below average. But I agree they were poor, but not not as bad as CSUN. Johnny B. Good says, I really I really miss the sweater puppies today on TV. I assume that you're talking about something on Animal Planet, right? Like that puppy bowl or whatever. Do they have that on? <laughs> AU Texman says, since when have we cared about winning on the road in football? <laughs> oh, man. Gus was in my town last night. He had dinner at Central, um, as, as many of the celebrities do. He and Kevin were in well they were they were coming through town to go to eclectic it's not really a straight shot but whatever and uh, they were going up there to watch a uh, prospect from the uh, 2021 class play basketball for handley uh, i forgot his name but he's like a defensive end type player outside linebacker defensive end so yeah Cast DL3 says it's Bourbon Night YouTube channel. I am definitely going to check that out. I'm not familiar with that. You know, I'm just kind of, we as an organization, AuburnSports.com, just recently kind of got into YouTube. We started, uh, we monetized our channel in July or August, and then we started doing, uh, started putting more emphasis on videos. We started doing shows like this for the Oregon game was the first one we ever did. And as such, I've kind of gotten more into the YouTube community because, I watch a lot of videos about how to do this and how to do that. I get to know, you know, not personally, but I've become familiar with a lot of YouTube people. And there's so much great content out there on YouTube. Just so much. I was watching a guy today, and uh, I forget his name. Hold on, I can get it because I still have it up here. It's an incredible video. Come here. Nope, it's gone. <laughs> uh, it was this dude who's like a travel. Uh, he does uh, YouTube stuff for travel. And he did a flight on Bhutan Air from Kathmandu to a small airport near uh, somewhere in, in near. You go by Mount Everest on the way there. It was a 40-minute flight. And he essentially was showing what it was like to fly on this airplane. And it was unbelievable just to see Mount Everest out the side of the airplane just blew me away. I mean, I know it's huge. Obviously, it's the tallest mountain in the world. But to just see from a plane how far how big it is from how far away he was it just blew me away man absolutely blew me away i'm not a big flyer oh, let's see i'm trying to cast dl3 hit jgt up with a long email two years ago glad you've come around i mean i'm sorry i'm not keeping up with you was this about the the brown water i don't know I'm glad some of you guys were agreeing with me about Northridge's D. It was really bad. I mean, it was like YMCA defense, seriously. Uh, Johnny B. Good says, nope, Christie's. <laughs> oh, I, th I was hoping it was something else. Christy Malzahn's a really, really nice lady uh, and funny, too. One of my all-time favorites. Probably my all-time favorite coach's wife. 
Although Tubby Smith's wife Donna, she's a really nice person too. Enjoyed uh, hanging out with her. She's really nice to reporters. You, you don't hear that much anymore. <laughs> uh, canoe man, my man, canoe man. Thank you for the super chat. Always here for us. Always active in the chat. Always a super chatter. Just a huge supporter of the channel, and I appreciate you. Says Coach Smith. Lobbying today to be added to the football booth. This must happen. Three-man football booth, adding the GOAT would be epic. I think uh, Sonny would tell you straight to your face that he doesn't know shit about football. <laughs> but I know, man, he can just do this Roan, Roan Mountain stories and stuff. Uh, he and uh, Andy, really, I've always loved Sonny. I always thought he was really, really funny. I wasn't the biggest Rod fan, but, I mean, he was good. He just, I thought basketball really wasn't his thing, and that kind of annoyed me. Um, so now that it's Andy... And he's a basketball guy more than a football guy. And you could tell totally from listening to him, he just he's really good at basketball. But he and Sonny, the interplay between those two is so, is better. It's funnier. And, you know, the way Andy kind of playfully will push back a little bit on some of the things that Sonny says, it makes it even better. Um, I, I just hope this goes on for years. Um, I know Coach Smith's kind of an older fella. I wouldn't dare ask him how old he is, but... Those two together are really, really good. It's really enjoyable to listen. Solo Tiger says, Layla Kiffin remains my all-time favorite. She's a very pretty lady. Uh, Johnny, be good. I'm not going to say your question on the air, but the answer is yes. Uh, Kenny M. <laughs> I'm, re I'm redacting your last name to protect your anonymity. <laughs> says, nice ladies can have sweater puppies. Okay, good. Good. It's good to know. It's very good to know. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Kenny earlier. I'm sorry, Corny. Corny M. We won't even, yeah, again, to protect your anonymity. You said Jimbo's wife was a better recruiter. I guess you're talking about, uh, ah, dad gummit. Was it Candy? Candy Fisher? Is that right? She's from Piedmont, Alabama. Silla so says, I still have trouble getting over how much Andy mixes up the players. Um, I haven't noticed that as much lately. Maybe it's just because I listen to him so much and I just don't really, I don't know. I can't really answer that. I think they're great on the radio. I, I think Andy's as good as it gets on the radio anywhere. I hadn't really listened to him a lot because, you know, he was doing girls games before. And I mean, I'm not, I wasn't going to listen to that really. And um, you can tell that all those years calling games, for Joe and for Nell and now for Coach Flo, he's he's gotten really good about it. Candy sounds about right. I know it ends with an I. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she seemed like a nice person. Jazzy Joe, come on, bro. That's not true. Does Kiffin still date Saban's daughter? That's mean. Dude, she's like 22. He's a little older than that. Come on now. Canoe Man says he believes the goat is 83. Could be true. Taylor Jacobs joke from AU Tax Man. I, I didn't want to go there, but uh, that, that is clever. And it's if I was if, if our roles were switched and you were sitting in my shoes and I was there typing, that's exactly what I would have said. Uh, oh, can't, corny! Come on now, I can't say that. Uh, anything else we want to talk about on this game? Let's see. Um, they had a hard time getting in front of Bolton. They did a great job on Halliburton, but they when you put Samir and Okoro on Halliburton, that left more one-on-one -on -one situations for the other guard, and he was better than I thought he would be. Um, he was a real pain in the ass. Finished with, uh, yikes, 23 points. Six of 19 shooting, though. I think BP would probably take that. Nine out of 10 at the line. Four assist, no, four rebounds, three assists, two turn. Oh, I'm getting them all mixed up. Four assists, no, one assist, two turnovers. 31 minutes, minus one, plus minus. So I guess the numbers kind of poke out, but he has... He was kind of a volume shooter tonight, wasn't he? It's because they couldn't get the other guy's shots very much. Uh, they had one big dude who I thought had a nice mid-range shot, and he, they didn't use him very much. He swished a couple. No. Oh. Um, something else that happened in this game that I think we got to keep an eye on moving forward is Auburn's inability to protect the rim and to rebound effectively when Austin was out. Austin's been great at both of those things this year. Um, particularly rebounding, he's just been awesome. Um, but when he comes out, and remember, I, I always feel like you're living on borrowed time with him because he likes to foul. His feet are not very quick, and so he, he lunges a lot. He's gotten better about it this year, and he's been able to stay on the floor a lot longer. 
huge improvement for him, and it's hard to do. That is really, really hard to do. So he deserves deserves a lot of credit for that. But he he's not a thirty minute he's not a thirty minute guy. So you've got to find a way to keep your defense, your rim protection defense, at least okay, and your defensive rebounding at least okay when Wiley's out. And I don't know that they do that. Ant is not a great rebounder. He's not a good post defender. Uh, Dan Gell is a pretty good rebounder when he wants to be, but as you guys know, it kind of comes on and comes off. So it's they got to figure out something there. Um, it it cost him a little bit tonight. There's going to be games where it costs him a lot later on, assuming that Austin doesn't stay in the game 30 minutes. It's weird that we're even in a position where Auburn feels like they need to have him in the game 30 minutes because he couldn't even last eight minutes last year. He'd foul out. I thought that late late uh, run by Iowa State kind of put a little bit of a blight on this game. Auburn did some really good things in this game, but they have got to finish. Got to finish the game, and I don't think they did. They did just enough to, to put, it, put it away there late with the free throws, but, man, they were in free fall. I don't think they had a bucket in the last two and a half minutes. When stuff gets tight like that, you've got to lock down, and then you've got to trust the things that are being called. You got to trust that stuff. You got to run it, and you got to trust it's going to work. And just going out there and losing your mind is—it's going to cost them. It's going to cost them. Uh, we mentioned it earlier. Not going to break any news, I don't think, with this one. But college game day is going to be in Auburn next Saturday. Uh, so that's like the national ESPN college basketball show. It's kind of like football, but it's basketball. I know nobody watches it because at Auburn we're just getting into the basketball culture but it's kind of big in some parts of the country nothing like the college football one but uh, so that'll be at auburn previewing or ahead of the auburn kentucky game uh, in auburn arena next saturday that game tips at five local time and will be on main espn channel indeed kentucky is at texas tech today which ought to be a good game texas tech's good this year not quite as good as baylor out there and i don't think they're going to be as good as kansas assuming kansas doesn't get half its roster suspended because um, D'Souza probably needs to go home after what he did. That was ugly. At Kansas, Kansas State, I mean, it's like on one hand, I love watching a fight now. And when the dude picked up that chair, I thought, here we go. It's about to get really, really engaging. And then he dropped it, which is a, a good call. And I don't know, damage has already been done. Canoe man, my man, <laughs> correctly uses the term not Andy. Not Andy broke the game day news, yes. We're referring to the guy that's not Andy. Uh, I heard uh, BP was asking if they were able to talk about it on the broadcast, and Andy said, yes, yes. The guy, name redacted. Mentioned it before the game. Yeah. So I, was, I wasn't trying to say we were breaking news here. I was just saying uh, it's for folks that were maybe weren't watching the game or weren't watching intently or whatever. Maybe that was something you hadn't heard yet. Uh, Jeremy E. says it's less cheesy than football game day. Absolutely. Football game day, to me, just gets really out of hand. I don't watch much of it, honestly. And I just got kind of tired of the whole Lee Corso thing. I, I, I feel like I know Lee Corso. Back in the old days, in the 90s, when we didn't have a lot of internet going on and whatnot, he was still that guy. And I would talk to him on the phone. He worked at the uh, Ticonderoga Pencil Company. And this is before cell phones were ubiquitous. And so I would call him at work, you know, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever, and just get his thoughts about whatever was going on. And he, uh, <laughs> he's kind of a dick. Yeah, I thought he was kind of a dick. I mean, I didn't really like talking to him. I did it because it was a popular segment for the advertiser back in the day, but he was kind of a dick. And so I just never really... They they make him out to be this charming old man is kind of the role he plays, and he's not that guy. So it just kind of bugs me. It always bugs me. Uh, NAAU fans says football game day is way too long. Absolutely. It's gotten to be like the Today Show. They have that on at my gym, and I, I can't miss it because it's on like all morning. I would like to try to miss it, although I do think Jenna Bush Hager's hot. Um, I know some of you guys are going to laugh at me about that, but you shouldn't. So that that doesn't bother me as much. And if she ever co-hosts with Natalie Morales, who also is really hot, that's fine. But I don't see those two as much anymore as I used to. Canoe Man says not nearly as good as College Game Day. It's it's a it's borderline boring. Eh, I can see that. Uh, Canoe Man says, wait, Lee Corso worked at a pencil company while on game day. Well, hell, he's been on game day for like 25 years or something. I mean, I, 
Yes, he was a representative at the Ticonderoga Pencil Company. He was like a salesman. I, you know, he had like an entire region. It wasn't like he was going door to door or anything, but uh, like a corporate salesman for Ticonderoga, absolutely. And so that's what I would call him at Ticonderoga, you know. Because you didn't really have cell phones. This would have been 97, 96, 97, and it, you, know, you would get someone's work number, and then you'd call them. That's kind of how it worked. You youngs, I don't know if you're young, specifically canoe man, but uh, young folks don't realize there was a time, you know, when you had to call people at their desk. Something like that. Uh, Blake is back. What's up, Blake? Saw you the other day. You were a big-time chatter in our, in our chat and appreciated. It says, congratulations to our Auburn Tigers for getting college game day. Let's step up and whip Kentucky, Ward M. Eagle. Mm-hmm. Declan Y. Hey, man, what's up? Welcome to the show. Uh, says, I'm dropping the truth bombs about Corso. Don't need to be ragging on him. I just, I don't know. He just seemed grumpy and off-putting. And then, and if he was a grumpy and off-putting on the show, then I'd be fine with that. But he plays this, you know, adorable old man. And it's like, I, he, he wasn't that way. He And he, it wasn't really that I think he disliked me. I think he was just kind of rattle rouse And uh, he wasn't anything personal, but he'd always be like, you reporters. Down in Alabama, you love to misquote me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is the first time I've ever talked to you, so I couldn't have misquoted you before this, but whatever. It's cool. Uh, Johnny B. Good, I'm glad you feel the same way I do about Jenna Bush Hager. I think she's lovely. Uh huh. She's welcome in my home. I would let her have my most expensive bourbon anytime she wanted to. That's an open invitation to you, Jenna, if you're watching. I don't know how, how your husband feels about it. I'll work out things on my end, but I've got it, and it's there for you if you want it. I think she's lovely. Canoe Man says, does Herbie work at a pen company? <laughs> yeah, I think Herb Street uh, is a, like a sports radio guy. And Herb Street, in my experience, he is the guy that he is like on TV. Uh, I mean, so I think he's true to himself, so to speak. Just, I, I like Herb Street. Uh, he's a, he's, he's a nice person. Um, I don't really, I don't call him anymore, but I used to back when I worked for newspapers and just kind of trade information. He knew a lot of stuff, man. He knew a lot of stuff. He uh, he reminds me kind of of Jeff Shear, if you guys know who he is. He was a uh, TV guy in Montgomery for, God, decades, and now he works at Auburn as, like, uh, one of their staff writers. Just a really nice person, and uh, Kirk's a nice guy. Let's see. AU Taxman is saying that Jenna Fisher is, is hotter than Jenna Bush Hager. I would agree with that, too. But uh, those are two of my all-time favorites. I, I have a thing for Jenna Fisher, and it really doesn't have to do with the office. It just has to do with the fact that she's hot, I think. And she's from St. Louis, which is one of my favorite towns. But uh, anyway, two uh, lovely J uh, Jennas there. A Jazzy Joe in the house. Again, thank you, Jazzy Joe. I'm, gl I'm really glad to have you on the on the uh, the show now. I think you made your debut last uh, show, and I'm glad to have you as part of the crew he says any news on charles woodson's replacement <laughs> charles woodson uh, his younger brother marcus was the uh, defensive backs coach at auburn um okay so here's kind of the what i'm seeing on that situation marcus uh just to kind of uh, go back he was coaching uh defensive backs at auburn great recruiter probably in my opinion their second best recruiter behind t will um got an offer from florida state turned it down in late jan no late december got an offer from Ole miss turned that down after talking about it for a while. And then Florida State came back and offered him the job again, and he took it. Um, this was, like, I think on a Tuesday night, and then he officially it went in on Wednesday morning, I think is the time frame there. Okay, so at that point, Auburn kind of needs a coach. Um, they're fine staffing-wise right now. I mean, it sucks to lose your second-best recruiter, but, I mean, you can live with it. And plus, they've got a bunch of guys signed, and the people that they're really out there and they're worried about, they've already got the people on them. I mean, you've got Rodney Garner and you've got Bick working on Broderick Jones, and you know you just got the Jay Hardy situation rectified, and you got some JUCO stuff going on, and they're, they're okay. So for me, I was thinking that Al Pogue would probably be the front runner. I still think he's gonna be, uh, but it turns out a couple things are a little different about this search than I thought they were. First of all, Kevin, I think, has essentially complete control of the hire. Now, if he wants to hire Joe Balsack from, like, Nutsack State or something, I, yeah, Gus might get involved there. But if, if it's somebody that Gus knows and Gus has heard of, you know, like, it's going to be fine. It, Kevin gets who he wants, okay? 
Wasn't really expecting that, just knowing Gus. So that's one thing you got to take into account. Second thing is, uh, I don't think they're in a hurry. I was thinking they would want to get somebody together pretty quickly, and I don't think they're thinking that way. So they're going to take their time. Um, I, the, the names you need to know, in my opinion, would be uh, Addison Williams, who played at South Carolina. Uh, he's, he's a young guy. He's actually been at Auburn since last summer. I think he's officially special assistant to the head, co- uh, to the head coach, but he's kind of more of a – like an analyst type guy. I mean, they come up with titles, but he's like a off the scenes, behind the scenes guy. He coached defensive backs at Furman, which is a good program at that level, and he recruited a lot for them at that level. And so he has some experience doing that. And they like Addison a lot. He's just very young. Uh, Addison, I would not be surprised to see him actually out on the recruiting trail next week, because uh, in lieu of having somebody hired, you can just kind of, uh, you know, anoint someone to go do it. I mean, you have a certain number of guys that can go out, and I mean, if they're short one. They can ask anybody to go. So if he's their analyst that they think would do the best job recruiting, they can just kind of knight him, so to speak, and he can go do it. So you got Addison, you got Blake Gideon, former GA at Auburn, uh, who is now the special teams coach at Ole Miss, just got hired there. Um, Blake, kind of a no-nonsense guy. I think Blake's going to be a head coach pretty soon um, in the next five, six, seven years, something like that. So he's very upwardly mobile. Um I don't know about him as a recruiter just because I don't know that side of him, but I can tell you something right now. He's a really, really good coach. And he is gonna, he's already moved up the ladder fast, and he's going to continue moving up the ladder fast. Um, but that's another guy that they're going to be thinking about. Al Pogue, uh, who was like a GA quality control assistant here about six, seven years ago now, went to Troy uh, with Neil Brown, spent four years at Troy as one of their primary recruiters uh, here in the southeast. And then he has now gone to West Virginia with Neil. And so he's entering his second season at West Virginia coaching DBs. He's from Mobile, played at Alabama State, and he made his name coaching high schools in Montgomery. Really good guy. Really tight with T. Will. And, uh, yeah, he knows those guys because he worked with them. And then you've got Zach Etheridge, who I think is kind of a dark dark horse probably. He doesn't have the same kind of relationships with the existing Auburn guys right now. I mean, he knows T. Will from the playing days, you know, or being former players together. Um, you know, I don't think he knows Kevin all that well. He doesn't know Gus too much at all, aside from just from the years having been around him uh, when he came back and stuff. But Zach is himself up moving up very quickly. He's at University of Houston right now. And uh, I think it's fair to say he would walk from Houston to Auburn to coach here. Same for Al. So those are the four guys that I think you get to keep an eye on, and uh, I don't think they're in a hurry. I actually sit on the bunker yesterday. I don't expect them to make a hire until February, so that's kind of what we're looking at. They're just not in a huge hurry. Jazzy says Zach Etheridge is who I want. I mean, obviously, he's a great Auburn player who overcame a broken neck on the field to come back and play, and everywhere he's gone, he's spoken very well of Auburn. So, I mean, yeah, I get it. Um I just don't know him as a recruiter. I, I, I mean, I just I don't know. I just not to say he's good or bad. I just don't know him that way. I know him as a strategist. Uh, he's he's a quiet guy, and he's a, more of a serious guy than some of the others. Uh, Blake is very serious. Zach is very serious. Al is very fun loving and mouthy, and Addison is probably in the middle. So, there you go. There's your update on the replacement for. Marcus Woodson or possibly Charles Woodson we don't know you know seriously best case scenario if you were just going to say who's the best person they could get it'd be Terrell Buckley I think who recently moved from Mississippi State to Ole Miss I think he's as good as it gets I think he's a good coach and I think he's an outstanding recruiter but and it it would yeah if they want to go to Ole Miss and steal something away from Lane Kiffin that wouldn't bother me I like the Ole Miss people believe me I've got friends at Rebel Groves, but it would be funny to kind of hijack some of their dudes. By the way, uh, Doug Goodwin, who was the director of high school relations here, just took a job at Ole Miss the other day, and he will be missed. Doug's one of the good ones. You guys might remember him as the uh, head coach at Demopolis when they were insane, like 03, 04, 05. They didn't lose, like ever. And then he went to Russellville, and he was really good. And he went to, golly, was it Lineville? He was really good, and he was – Decent at Homewood, too, but not quite on that same level. Anyway, he's over at Ole Miss now. He's going to be a special teams analyst working 
alongside Blake Gideon. Declan says, <laughs> I mentioned uh, earlier that Jenna Fisher was from St. Louis. Declan Y says, St. Louis is a great city, but the night I spent in jail there was not too great. I'm assuming there's a story there, Declan, because I'm 47 and I never found myself in jail and I really don't feel like I've gotten close. So maybe that's on you. <laughs> Blake says, hey, I went to Nutsack State. <laughs> Hey, now. Johnny B. Good says, puppies pick of Christy or Jenna Bush Hager over report card slash stat sheet. The people have spoken. Okay, we're doing it. Final box comes down. Oh, I haven't even rotated the pictures. We got some pictures in there from the game. Well, that's not that game. I, I get like two or three pictures from each game, and then I, I try to freshen them up. Um, Let's see if we can get a picture of Jenna Fisher. No, I'm not going to do that right now. We got too much going on here. Me uh, reading through you guys with the chat. <laughs> we got anything else from the basketball game? Oh, it's outlived. The outlived game is going to be this Kentucky game coming up. Um, that is the big charity that BP started um, where he raises money to uh, support the families of folks who are receiving cancer treatment, which is a really interesting uh, charity idea. And it's a really good one because cancer treatments – are obviously very, very difficult for the patient. They're painful, and they're very draining uh, emotionally and physically. And we spend a lot of time focusing on them, as we should, because those folks need support too. Uh, but it's the people who support those people. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of things going on in your life you don't even think about when your wife or your son or your daughter are getting treatment, you know, you've got to, you still got to get your bills paid, and you still got to get to and from the treatments, which can be, you know, in Houston – at MD Anderson or wherever you've got to go. And that's where Outlive comes in, and they kind of help you logistically just support you in these times uh, when things are really rough when it comes to cancer treatment. So I think it's a really cool thing. Um, BP does his annual golf tournament out near Alex City uh, in April every year and raises a lot of money there. I know Tub, before got, Tub got political, he used to go out there every year. I love seeing Tub. No coach in the, in the history of football talks more shit than Tommy Tuberville. Nothing I enjoy more, with the possible exception of Andy and Sonny on the radio, do I love hearing more stories from Tub. Even ones I've heard before are funny. Uh, so anyway, the Outlive game is going to be this Kentucky game. It's going to be the college game day game. You can stop by. Uh, Andy was saying that they're going to have the shirts available uh, in the team shop there, uh, the Outlive shirts, and that money will go to the Outlive charity, and BP would love for everybody to have the Outlive shirts. Um, I always buy one myself because I love the charity. I think it's a great idea. And then I just give them to my daughter. Cause you know, of course I don't wear cause you know, I'm a unbiased reporter, but anyway, it's the outlive game. So I would strongly suggest that everybody get an outlive shirt, even if you're not going to be there, uh, because I think that's an incredibly awesome charity. And, uh, I'm not one that sits around talking about charities too much. Cause I feel like it's up to you to figure out what's legit and what's not. I don't want to get involved in that, but, um, I just never thought of that charity before, you know, that idea. And it's really, really valuable. And he's had some of the folks up there that his charity has, has benefited, has helped. And, man, they, I mean, they are so humble and appreciative. And I, you can just tell it's not some fakey stuff. It's real. He's touching real lives. And, yeah. All right, what else we got here? Everybody's adding people. <clears throat> <laughs> Johnny B. Good. I'm not going to get into this. I don't even know what you guys are doing. Blake D. says, Bruce is such a generous, charitable, and selfless man, and you can see it trickle down to his players. Yeah, BP. There's a lot of folks that think BP's FOS that are not part of the Auburn sphere who think he's just this shyster that gets in trouble all the time, but that has not been my experience with BP at all. Um, He is uh, he's something else. Canoe Man says, I should wear the Outlive shirt. Maybe I could do that for the stream next Saturday. I would do that. I don't have the current one, though. We'll have to go get it. I'll be over there this week. I'll put you down for that, Canoe Man. Good stuff. Thank you for the uh, super chat, sir. All right. Let's see if there's anything else in the chat that I need to hop on here. I don't see anything there. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out. Talking about Ole Miss a little bit. 
That's the next game coming up. Auburn's going to be at Ole Miss on Tuesday night. Um, you can see Ole Miss has had a difficult stretch. They have not won in January yet. Uh, they're playing Georgia at Georgia today, a game that I expect them to lose, and it looks like Ken Palm does as well. So at that point, they would have lost. Uh, and they'd be on an eight-game skid. Right? No, seven. Seven games, kid. Excuse me. I'm not great at math. Um, I did ask Neil about this team, Neil McCready, who runs the Ole Miss site, about this team because, you know, I think a lot of Kermit Davis, the head coach at Ole Miss, and I thought he got his team playing like mongrels last year. They were just mean and, and really a lot better than I thought they would be. So I just figured they would continue to build on that. And you can see by the numbers here they haven't. Neil said that it was his opinion that something just wasn't right in the locker room that – they just didn't have that, like, esprit de corps or the chemistry or whatever you want to call it, and he just didn't think it was clicking. Now, this was probably back right after the A&M loss when he told me that, and I thought, yeah, we'll see, but they've lost four in a row since then, and looks like Neil was onto something. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that Georgia Ole Miss game and see how they do in that game, but I would expect them to lose it. Uh, Jazzy Joe says, I need a 3X Outlive shirt. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, sir. Again. Golly. They're adding up for you, Jazzy Joe. Three of them now already. Thank you. Um, yeah, three X. We, we'll get you that, bro. We'll get you that hooked up. But I, I'll, I'll wear one on the. Uh, I'm thinking faster than I'm talking. I will wear one on the stream next week just for canoe man. It's good stuff. Um, Johnny, be good. You must be looking at the. Uh, must be looking at the uh, Ken Palm. Let's see. I can get that up here. Auburn. Oh, they do have that game. Already pulled up. I'll tell you what, I will, uh, let me get this on the uh, screen for you guys. It'll just take me about 30 seconds. I know this is scintillating video. <laughs> and it, and when I put it up, it'll be way too big. I'll have to size it down. But that's okay. I can do that pretty quickly. All right. Put that there. Back over to OBS. Add that. Put that in there. Put that in there. And here we go. It's going to be really big, guys. I'll have to size it down for you. This is the official Ken Palm breakdown of the game today. And, oh, dadgummit. I grabbed the wrong thing. Um, Did it again. It won't go back. You dirty. Dirty. Tyrese Halliburton was named the MVP of the game. I want to see these numbers. Why in the world? So his offensive rating is really good, but he didn't do much else. I guess the four steals are considered really big for him. Low turnovers, considering how often the ball was in his hands. I don't know, whatever. These are the kind of things that happen when you look at stats too much. You know what I'm saying? Solo Tiger says, I better keep the necktie with the outlive tee. Got to keep it classy. All right, I can do that, too. Maybe that's a good idea, too. <laughs> Johnny B. Good says, pick like that of Christie's pups. I don't have a picture of her dog, man. I don't, I don't even think they have a dog. I don't remember seeing one. Don't remember seeing that at all. Um, Wow. I'm really surprised to see Tyrese Halliburton as the MVP of that game. I, if it was anybody, I thought it would have been Bolton if it was for one of their players. And looks like the uh, top game over there for Auburn was Austin Wiley. Seven boards. Seven points in 23 minutes, but he was doing a lot of other stuff too. I mean, he is so crucial to their rim protection and their rebounding. 23 minutes for him, though. Only gets two personal fouls. I'm telling you, it, I was so skeptical coming into the season that he was going to be able to change that part of his game because he just has always been a lunger. I thought for sure he was going to be a guy that they would not be able to get 15 minutes out of. And it turns out they can play him almost as long as they need him. He's he's never going to be a 40-minute guy. I mean, come on. Nobody that tall is. But, yeah. yeah. I've been really impressed with him. That stuff is not easy to do, guys. He's done a hell of a job with that. So, anyway, yeah, there's the Ken Palm look. These are the kind of breakdowns that they do. I like this graphic up here where it shows the probability of Auburn or Iowa State winning that game, and it never really fluttered there late, did it? 
Even though I was, I mean, I didn't really think Auburn was going to lose, but it was getting pretty damn tight. I would have thought that that uh, red line would have gone up a little bit toward the end. At least gone up a, you know, a blip or something. I don't see shit about that. I still think Iowa State's going to be good before it's over. They tend to be really good late in the season. They just got to they got to tighten up on defense a little bit. All right. Took a look there at old Mrs. Ken Palm. They're just kind of so-so. Or you could actually argue that they're kind of sucky, actually. Uh, their synergy data, this is what they do on offense. You can kind of get an idea for what they're trying to do. Uh, when you got a team with their, their primary uh, offensive or attacking mechanism is spot-up shooting and they're listed as below average at it, you know they're in deep shit. When, you're, when your go-to offensive move is considered bo- below average, you're in trouble. So below average, average, good, 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 poor. Are their top six attacking mechanisms. Uh, I don't have Auburn's data right in front of me, but it doesn't look like that. It looks a lot better than that. Just saying. All right. Let's see if we want to get Mr. B-Matt on the horn, who was there inside the Auburn arena today with uh, young Nate, and uh, get some feedback from him. I had lunch with him. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely yesterday. And then uh, we went walking over at Beard Eves, me and B-Matt and Jason Caldwell. I told you guys how, how much I love Jason Caldwell. And uh, they were uh, kind of killing time between lunch, and then they had a baseball press conference. And uh, so we walked around Beard Eves for like 45 minutes, and it's always good talking with Jason. He's just one of the really, really good guys. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, it's Jason Caldwell over at Inside the Auburn Tigers which is kind of branded with 24-7 now. I don't really understand the, the specifics of what they're doing with that, but anyway. He's uh, one of the all-time greats, in my opinion. Somebody whose stuff I read, I just really give a shit about that guy. He's really good people. We have some really good guys on the beat, really, and, and gals, too. I, I don't know the gals as many. There aren't as many, but there's an AL.com gal that I don't really talk to very much. I always feel like a creepy old man, so I just don't talk to gals usually. Young gals, anyway. Uh, all right. Let's see if B Matt is going to get back with me on that. He may still be writing. Jazzy Joe with your fourth super chat of the day. My goodness. Corny says he will super chat 100 if Jay goes topless. LMFAO, bro. I'll throw in 100 also. Topless? Uh, I would consider doing that for something else, though. I don't know. Something. That, you know, something that wasn't going to benefit me or whatever. Blake D says, Jason Caldwell's great. My brother knew him personally, and I met him once. Uh, yeah, he's, he's really, really good guy. Canoe Man knows him as well. Uh, I always like to tease Jason because he's three weeks older than me, and he'll always be three weeks older than me. He was born in a late April 1972. And he and I know, like, I feel like I'm the expert at 80s music trivia. I just, because I was, like, really, really nerdy about it. I just, like, wanted to know all that artists and the song titles and the albums and all that stuff because I watched a lot of MTV back in the day and uh, Jason is every bit every bit as good at that stuff as I am I can't I can't stump him on 80s music trivia it can't be done and if I drop like movie lines he's got those too it, it's bizarre to me that I'm in San Diego with all the shit going on in San Diego and he's in Sylacauga at the same time let's say this is like 85, 86, 87 and he knows everything I know about pop culture I don't understand how it happens he says, maybe donate it to Outlive. Um, I'll tell you what. We'll think about this ahead of the uh, the uh, Ole Miss game. That's going to be our last 8 o'clock tip until at least the SEC tournament, which is good. So, um, yeah, we don't necessarily get great uh, numbers after late games during the week like that, but I'm open to it. I like doing something for Outlive. That'd be good. I, I don't think you guys want to see me topless, though. I mean, I'm just saying I'm not like the fattest guy in the world, but. There's not a lot not a lot to enjoy there. Maybe there's too much to enjoy. I don't know. Anyway, we'll think about it. Canoe Man says, <laughs> I don't want to encourage it. Uh, AU Taxman says, speaking of gals, when are we going to get to see that J. Lee, uh, Simone, Eli showdown? Have they been talking about that? I worry a little bit about J. Lee sometimes. I mean, he's really chilled out. He's gotten a lot better than he was 10 years ago. But sometimes I wonder what y'all are talking about on that. Are they in like a Twitter war?
That would interest me. All right, BMAT's back with me. He says give him two minutes. That was at 226. It's now 227. We're halfway there. John David Race has got to update the schedule, JG. Is it messed up? I think, I think that's right. Pretty sure that stuff's right. Let's see. Cass DL says, uh, maybe get JGT and all AU gear for the UK game for a price. Nah, come on, man. I wouldn't do that. You guys all think that since I went to Kentucky and graduated there uh, 21 years ago that I still really care about it. I don't. Jay Lee thinks he can take her one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know her. I don't know if she could do that. I mean, I've seen her, and I would imagine she probably has some skills, but I don't know that. Uh, Jay Lee's talking so much junk to me the other day about that he could hit, like, homers off of uh, Auburn softball pitchers, which is a story that men love to tell, right? Like, if I could play softball, I would kick their ass. And I told Jay Lee he'd be lucky to get a foul ball, and he was talking big, big. He was talking big junk. And uh, I really would like to get him into the uh, the box against, um, I forgot her name now, their ace pitcher, the really tall girl from Toledo or Akron or whatever. I can't remember her name. God, I'm getting old, I guess. I guess it's all that bourbon. Lacey, maybe? How can I not remember this? Dude, Philip would kick my ass for not remembering her name. Philip is so good about softball, man. He and Mickey are like BFF. They're just like, you know, they're like approximately the same age, it seems like. Actually not. I think Mickey's a little younger than him, but they're just buddies. And so, is it Lacey? God dang it. Anyway, she throws like 68, 69, 70 maybe miles an hour. And there's no, there's no way that Jay Lee is going to walk out there, having not played baseball in 15 or 20 years, and start hitting home runs off a softball pitcher who's locating at 70 miles an hour. It's not happening. It's not happening. I know that, and you know that, and everybody on earth knows that except Jay Lee. Anyway, he just doesn't know what he's thinking. He's just crazy. WDE Boom says we need to send Jay Lee out there to see that. Yes, I want to see that too. I would really like to see it. Um, it was like two or three years ago, there was a sports editor at the OA News named Dana Sullinan. Great girl. And she kind of was talking this same shit. And I, I, She told me she was a very good softball player in her – youth and she wasn't very old at the time so i was like eh, maybe and she's like well you pick the pitcher and i guarantee i'll get a hit off of her and i was like this is easy money it was 20 bucks so we actually set it up because this is back when um clint was there and he was real cool about anything like that so i picked michaela obviously and so dana goes out there and this is gonna be a really big deal unfortunately uh my sister died like right as we were getting into that and so i, I actually went to her funeral and they did it when I was gone. So I, I didn't actually get there. I wasn't there to see it, but they did videotape it to me. And then Dana tweeted it at me. So I, I got a chance to kind of enjoy it publicly. But she got her ass beat. Like, Michaela, just nothing. And it was funny. It was almost like a Bugs Bunny cartoon where, like, you know, Michaela would would, would uh, pitch it. And, like, the ball's already in the mitt <laughs> by the time Dana got the swing around. And then she resorted to bunning, and she still sucked at it. So uh, I've already done this once, and I know how it ends. And Jay Lee can get up there and think he's Rod Carew or whatever. I don't care. Uh, he ain't doing it. All right, let's see if we can get uh, Mr. Uh, B-Man on the horn here. God, I would love to do that. Maybe we could do that somehow. We could do that for Outlive. Uh, John, Ray Davids, uh, John David Ray, excuse me, says, how do we get an Outlive shirt? I believe they're going to be in the, in the bookstores. Andy said it's going to be in the team store this whole week coming up. And you can also buy it at the game before the game. So, like, in the um, – the concourse is there. They'll have them available. That's where I usually get them when I walk in uh, the night, the day of the game. And I think you can find them again at other places around town. I mean, it's something they're trying to really get out. All right, let's get Mr. B-Man on the horn here. Yeah, we had Allie on the horn. I forgot we called Allie that one night when it was getting really late and we were really lit up and we need some uh we need some college advice for my daughter and we called Allie. I don't know if you guys follow Allie on the uh Solo Tiger says Rod Crew L L nice current reference. <laughs> yeah, Rod Crew just uh just retired a couple years ago, right? I just think of him as a really good back control guy. I guess he could have said Tony Gwynn or whatever. 
Although Tony Gwynn's probably old now too, right? Um, you guys ought to follow Allie on Twitter, though. She's pretty funny. Um, I think in a way it's kind of unintentionally funny. Uh, Jazzy Joe, by the way, thank you for the super chat on the for real. Let's do something for Outlive. I, I would like to do that. We need to kind of brainstorm about that a little bit. Um, I hope it doesn't mean me going topless, but, I mean, if that's what it takes. Um, it, it's just not going to be beneficial to you guys at all. I wonder what we could do. I mean, my wife has some really cute friends maybe that could come on the stream or something, but, I mean, they're not going to take their top off or anything. I wouldn't think. No, no, not really. Um, shoot. I don't know. We'll think about it. You guys should follow Allie. She's kind of unintentionally funny. I like Allie. She's a really nice girl. She used to work here, and now she's off. She spread her wings, and she's doing her thing out there in Atlanta now. But uh, you ought to follow her. She's like the ultimate, like, no-shit Auburn tweeter. Like So, like, everything's, like, perfectly right down the middle, like, not no hot takes. It's almost like someone who would, like, tweet out everything about, like, hey, I'm really against drunk driving. Retweet if you are, too. Well, everybody's against drunk driving. Or... Hey, man, I'm really against domestic violence. Retweet if you're against domestic violence. Well, we're all against that. You know, I mean, hey, it's I love it when the sun's out. Isn't it great when it's warm? It's like we all like that. She's like that. And I, I love the tweeting, man. I, <laughs> that's like every game. It's the same thing. Like, man, I sure hope Auburn wins this game. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? Like, hmm. Johnny B. Good's asking, what happened with Jay Lee and Simone Eli? I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine that those two are, like, mad at each other for real. They're probably just talking smack for fun. Because I've seen them interact at games, and, and they're friends. So, Corny says, Allie's good on Twitter, but such a homer. Yeah, that's, that's I should have just said it that way. She's homed out totally. What is Allie's Twitter handle? Let me pull that up. I imagine it's something uninventive. Wish you guys could just see my... I gotta figure out a way to get it so you guys can just see my stuff here, my uh, my screen. Uh, so it's at Ali underscore Davison, no D in the middle, as we used to joke. So A L L I E underscore D A V I S O N. We always call it Ali, no D in the middle. Ali Davison, no D in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so I typed in Ali, right? And I don't. She's the only Ali I follow. But there's another person, the third one down. It's called Ali Awesome. The Vaginius, which is a mesh of the word vagina and genius. She's a vaginius. I'm not going to follow her. No. So anyway, Allie D. Always good stuff. Oh, Johnny B. Good put it up. Allie underscore Davison, no D in the middle. Correct. Uh, Castiel says Tony Gwynn passed. Yeah, he did. Um, golly, how long has it been? Six, seven, eight years maybe. He was not old. He was probably 55. He died, and he had cancer of some kind and just died. Sucks. Uh, yeah, when I was in San Diego, dude, he was just kind of coming along, and I was like, that was I was really fired up because when I, I got moved out of San Diego because my dad got out of the military, and he got a job in the civilian world in Oklahoma, so I got pulled out of San Diego. And I was so bummed, so bummed. And uh, that was when Tony Gwynn was, like, hitting his his peak, and so I would just always be talking about Tony Gwynn in Oklahoma, and they'd all be like, don't give a shit. Like, they were all eat up with the Rangers and the Astros, and I didn't care about them. All right, anyway, going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Where is uh, Warwick? He was the one that was like, bro, I like all the side talk y'all do. I'm like, word. Wait a minute. Why is What's it up? Hey, what up, man? I got sound. I'm walking out of the stadium right now. Well, you sound good. You're, you're, you seem like you're out of breath, though. Do you walk? Mm, every once in a while. It's probably because I'm on my um, on my uh, uh, wireless headphones, so that probably has something to do with it. Oh, is that, does that mean you're a baller? Do what? Does that mean you're a baller? Mm, nah, sometimes, yeah, sure. For a 50-year-old uh, uh, tall, skinny, white boy without any athletic skills, sure, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I mentioned that me and you and Jason were walking around uh, Beard Eves yesterday. That was pretty fun. We did. We got we got our steps in. I'm fixing to do the same right now, actually. You going over to Beard Eves? exciting afternoon I have planned. What? You going to Beard Eves? Yep. And you going to get your uh, 11 flights of stairs? Yep. Mm. I'm jealous. Although I got a few of those at uh, the arena already. So we're good. 
All right, tell me, uh, you know, your thoughts uh, from this game against Iowa State. They did some really good things, and then uh, toward the end of the game, they did some bad things, too. Yeah, you know, if it wasn't for that finish, that would have been a really close to complete game, I thought, for Auburn. You know, the first thing, they got off to great start at the start of the game and the start of the second half, which is something they have not been doing, especially at the start of games, which I thought was really important. Uh, they shot pretty well from three-point range. They did a great job of their spacing again. Even some of their missed three-pointers, you know, they were good shots they were taking. them. I mean, not all of them, but most of them. Yeah. And uh, they did a great job. Um, Samir and Isaac are driving in and getting getting good shots at the rim and finishing. Especially Isaac, so good when he drives in there. So, so good. And, um, you know, they just gave up a little bit too much there. Made some mistakes down there in the last, I guess it was, I think they led about, they led about 14 or two and a half minutes left and just kind of collapsed there. And made yeah. a little bit... Uh, a little bit nervous there at the end, but um, that happens sometimes. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. But I say overall, that was a really good performance. And you can see this team, how much it's improved, uh, you know, from that, that week where they lost just two road games. I think they're in a much better position going to Ole Miss Tuesday to get back on track and, and pick up another road, road W. Yeah, what what are your thoughts about this team going uh, to Ole Miss? Ole Miss has not been very good, B-Matt, but they tend to struggle on the road. Auburn does. They do, and Ole Miss usually plays really good against Auburn at their gym. But yeah. I think this Auburn team, because of the way they play defensively, because they've been through that tough patch and they've you know done the things they need to do to adjust and to get better, I think they're better um, set now to uh, get a win over a team that really should win on the road. And I mean, Ole Miss probably this year is a team that Auburn should win both games home and away, assuming they play them at home later on the season. Yeah. Um, so this is a game I think they're going to win. Uh, your thoughts on the impact of college game, game day coming to campus for the very first time. Is that a big deal, you think? <laughs> I think it's a pretty big deal. I, I have to confess, I've never actually watched b- basketball college game day. But, yeah, I think it's big. I mean, it puts a program on the spotlight. It's, again, the first time ever this has occurred at Auburn, so that's another uh, big deal, I think. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, there'll be a little bit of a spectacle, and I'm sure Bruce is the, the right coach to sort of uh, pump it up even more. And I know the students going to turn out. Should be a great crowd at home against Kentucky on a Saturday. It's just going to be a terrific atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. And what was BP's kind of thought after that game, B Matt? Was he bummed out about that finish, or was he stoked about Isaac playing so well and them uh, having some really good things go on in that game? I, I would say he was um, overall positive about it. You know, just like any coach is going to point out. Um, Where are you at? Do you yeah, sound like yeah, you're in a? I, I'm in the stairway, so it probably sounds like an echo right now. Yeah. But um, I think overall he was just excited with the way uh, they performed, especially on Halliburton. You know, Isaac and Samir would shut him down and really outplay the guy who's you know, projected as a top five overall pick. Yeah. And I thought Samir and Isaac did a great job just kind of manning him up all day long and, and just keeping the ball out of his hands for the most part. Yeah, he only had seven shots, which for a guy was his, his length and a guy who plays the point and handles the ball most of the time is – Really impressive. Yeah. I mean, they really just were in here on his, you know, in his grill, so to speak, and really limited what he could do. All right, so how big is this stretch coming up, B-Man? We talked already about the Ole Miss game, but then you've got Kentucky at home, and then you're at Arkansas, and then LSU at home. I feel like this is going to be the real grinder right here. This, this, this stretch here is the difference from whether Auburn can or cannot be uh, competing for the SEC championship the regular season. I mean, to me, this is, this is the stretch now, you know. You can lose to Kentucky on the road and still win the SEC. I don't think you can get swept by Kentucky home and away and win the SEC. So, uh, they got to get this home win against them. And, of course, LSU is undefeated right now, so somebody's got to knock them off. Uh, what's going on in the uh, in Beardies right now? I think there's another um, wheelchair basketball game. Sounds like it. I'm about to walk over there. But, uh, yeah, when we were in there yeah, they yesterday. Were here, uh, they were here yesterday. We were here playing, and uh, I hear a lot of noise out here, so I'm assuming that's going on now, too. It is, yeah. You can, you, game. can you tell who's playing, bro? No, I cannot. Um, no, actually, it's a practice. It's definitely practice. It's not okay. a game. So, uh, they're on both ends of the board, board practicing right now. So, I'm not sure about to play, but it looks like they're just warming up. Yeah, okay. All right, B-Matt, I appreciate your report, my man. I hope you uh, enjoy getting your steps inside Beard Eves. I'm jealous because that's a great place to get steps. It's perfect, you know. I mean, it's got a purpose. 
too expensive to tear down right now, so we might as well get the best use of the skin out of it. Word. All right, B Matt. You behave yourself, bro. All right, everybody hang out out there. Have fun. All right, see ya. Bye. All right, B Matt. The man, the myth, the legend. He's uh about to get his steps in at Beard Eves and they're uh playing wheelchair basketball. They were yesterday too. Auburn was playing uh actually live at the time. I, I couldn't tell who they were playing though. It was somebody in red, but I don't think it was Alabama, so I don't know what was going on there. Canoe Man says, I would not doubt that B Matt is currently playing basketball, however, zero chance he is sitting down. No, he is definitely going up and down uh the stairs over there right about now. He likes to go in, and he does his steps. He goes, uh, I don't know, maybe four times all the way up and down, and that's the equivalent for the Fitbit of 10 flights of stairs, and then he gets his 10, and that's it. Then he starts walking around the loops just to get his average steps in. We actually calculated it yesterday. I don't know if I still have this number on. Um, so for him, one lap around Beard Eves is uh, like 395 steps or something like that, <laughs> and uh, for me, it was like 450 <laughs> Because his legs are that much longer than mine. I have, like, little gerbil feet, and uh, and he has long legs, and so there was that much difference. I couldn't believe it. I thought it would be, like, 20, and it was a lot more than that. And then Jason, who's like whose legs are longer than mine but shorter than Brian's, was right in the middle. I mean, just like you would expect, and so it was funny. I thought it would be, you know, Jason would be, like, five or ten more than him, and it, it turned out it was different, though. Solo says, I have a coworker with a kid on the wheelchair team. I actually follow them a little. Yeah, I couldn't. We actually tried to watch them a little bit yesterday. I mean, we, we successfully watched them a little bit yesterday. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a very different game because there's only so much space in the lane, really, you know, and uh, so they have to get creative with the way that they distribute the ball around. It seems like there's a lot of pressure on your point guard to be able to pass the ball where you need it to get the shot off. I, I just felt watching that that the job for the point guard was even harder in wheelchair basketball, but. Uh, I don't know. That was just after watching like five or ten minutes, though. Let's see, Declan Yearwood is, I guess, talking about the. I don't know which game you're talking about. I mean, it's. You're, I guess you're talking about Texas, but I don't know which game that is. Canoe Man says, "Are we really talking about B Matt's long legs?" No, we're talking about my short legs, Canoe Man. Thank you. All right. Anything else we need to discuss here? We've been on the air for about an hour and a half, almost which is uh, a little longer than average. <laughs> As Canoe Man noted, we're talking about Brian's legs at this point. That's not a good sign. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Final box. Take one last look at that. Uh, great game from Isaac, particularly in the second half. I want to say he had maybe seven in the first half. Five in the first half. I'll look this up. I've got those numbers in front of me somewhere. Home stats, first half box, Okoro had five points on two of five shooting. Second half, 14 points of five of six shooting, including four of seven at the line. Two rebounds. Yeah, 16 minutes in the second half. So he stayed out there a bunch. Really, really good game from Isaac. And he obviously is the real deal. I mean, he's really good. I think the question now is just, is he a lottery pick or is he, is he just second half of the first round? Um and then at that point, you've got to kind of figure out what he what he's going to do. Because he really would like to play with Stretch and specifically Sharif next year. He would like to. I mean, he's not just coming into this season saying, I'm one and done, I'm out. He's just going to play it by ear and see what happens. Isaac had a great game today. Samir, maybe not quite as great a game. I think defensively, he was probably at his best today. 18 points, but 5 of 13. He had one really good, like, spinning finish in the lane that I was just sure wasn't going to go down, and it did. Uh, but defensively, he was a big part of the Halliburton game and uh, did an awesome job. Uh, defensively, Javon finishes 11 points on 4 of 9 shooting. I didn't really notice him as much in the game. Uh, he had a couple shots early in the game, but I didn't mo notice him much after that. Uh, D'Angelo, I didn't really notice him much either, except for that egregious shot with about a minute left on the uh, in the game. Uh, six rebounds for him in 33 minutes is... It's okay. I still feel like he can do more as far as that goes. Uh, Ant was pretty good today. Nine points uh, in 18 minutes. Had a couple – no, he had three threes, but a couple of them early. Uh, obviously, he's got his little – he's like a one-trick pony kind of. But it's a good trick. There's not a lot of fives that can do the things that he does. 
the way that he's you know rolling off screens and taking threes, it really messes up pretty much every defense that Auburn goes against. They're not ready to have their five handling pick and roll rollers beyond the arc. That's just not something that fives do. Um, and so that kind of that's what makes Anthony as good as he is. Because if you were just playing him as a, as a four, he would get mauled. He doesn't have it. Can't play with his back to the basket. He's not a good defender. But the way that they use him as a stretch five, it just kind of accentuates the good things about him, and then it limits some of the uh, defensive lapses that he would have because of where where he is all the time. Got another super chat coming in. We got two, actually. Sparrow Empire with another one. Thank you very much, sir, for your support as always. Thanks for the great shows. Feel free to pass along from Sparrow to JG to Jay Lee to Jay Green. Kidding, mostly. You bet, man. And also one from Jeff H. Says, good stuff as always, JG. Appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you very much. I know you've been here before. And that's definitely appreciated. Thank you for being a super chatter and for being part of the uh, the chat and whatnot. Let's see what else we got going up here. Um, I like seeing them post up Okoro. Yeah, I like seeing him post up people too. He's gotten really good at that stuff. Uh, that might be his best move now. If, if I see Okoro posting up a three, I know what's going to happen. He's getting to the hole. It's just, is he going to finish or is he just going to get fouled? Because he's, he's getting really good at that. Uh, Blake D says, we appreciate you, Jay, as always, and nothing but love to my Auburn family and your families. I'm, you're so positive, man. Thank you. Uh, we, we need some of that positivity. If you're in the bunker, you better be you better chill out, though, because the people will get really mad if you talk nice like that. If you try to be nice in the bunker, everybody says that you're a bad guy. I don't understand it. Uh, Sam H says, love this show. Thank you, Sam. We love you. Uh, the Canoe Man says, what about BMAT's calf game? He has none. Uh, he has twigs for legs. He will tell you this. I am Calfzilla. I have the biggest and best calves in all of North America. Um, I got them from my granddad Wexler, who is himself a boxer. He was shorter than me, but he was a boxer, and he had he was a very muscly, angry, pissed off dude in the ring. And he he would fight out of the ring too. He's he's a pretty badass uh, Navy guy. Um, ended up being pretty cool, like as he got older and played golf and was chill. But I'm saying when he was a young man, he was a, he was a brawler. And uh, even though he was short, he would whoop a man's ass, too. I haven't done a lot of ass whooping in my life, as you can probably expect. With my hair. I, don't, I probably don't look like the guy that would kick a lot of ass. Um, what else we got? <laughs> I'm not even going to go into this whole uh, vertical, corny, about what you can control and what you can't control. Uh, Canoe Man says, <laughs> laser disc. I actually had a few. I bet you did, too. Uh, Hayden B says the stretch start at five next year. Let's think about this. So the stretch start. We need to see if they're going to sign some of these other cats, what they get in the late window. But based on what's happening right now, yeah. I think you would see him at five, and then you would see Jalen would be your stretch four at that point. You know, Jalen, to me, his game is very similar to Ant's. Uh, he's a three-point shooter, really, by trade. He has a very sweet shot. He's left-handed. Um, I think he's going to play that role. So they need to go out and probably get somebody else, like another big to kind of work in the post. But uh, they've still got some time to get some dudes, and they're looking at some guys that would be really good at that. Canoe Man says, where in the hell is Joker? I don't know. I don't think he's been here in the last two or three shows unless he's going by some kind of a an alias. You know, if he is like a corny mofo or whatever. Dan W. says, you've added another dimension to my AU enjoyment. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Dan. And I hope you come back for our shows. We'll have our next show after the Ole Miss game. It'll be very late. I know a lot of you guys probably won't make it just because it's middle of the week. It's going to be, geez, 10, 10 30 p.m. Central Time, 11, 30 for our friends in the Eastern Time Zone. That's pretty late uh, for a Tuesday night. But if you guys want to stay up, I will be here for you. And we will be drinking. I don't know what we'll be drinking, but we'll be drinking. And we'll be talking about uh, what we can do for our live. See, Corny says, Jay, almost talked about poop. That will be great when it happens. Oh, you got me now. Now I've said it. <laughs> you guys are bad. Ah, tricked me into saying the word poop. Can't believe it. What a low point. All right, I guess we'll wrap it up then, guys. 
let's see, Blake D says, no doubt, Jay, I'm not currently in the bunker, and will I will certainly keep my positivity to the brain drain. I didn't mean it that way, but I'd rather you be here than nowhere. We'll leave it at that. I do think the uh, Auburn Sports is a great spot to go. Uh, for your Auburn coverage, we've got some great beat writers. Brian Matthews, young Nate is coming along. Uh, Jeffrey Lee and I were working the phones last night to see where the coaches were. Uh, Carnell was in Hartford. And uh, Kevin and Gus, as I mentioned earlier in this show, were up in Eclectic uh, watching uh, a young man that they're trying to get from the 2021 class uh, playing for Handley High School at Eclectic. So there you go. Love the cats. Hornacious says, late shows are lit. I don't think I gave you proper uh, propers for uh, being a super chatter earlier, Hornacious. Thank you for doing that. I think it was when BMAT was on the horn. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure you love late shows because you're going to get on there and say Hornswoggle sucks or whatever. But uh, look at you, Jazzy Joe, again. Huge. It's your fifth. Well, actually, you have four super chats and then a, what do they call that, a super sticker, I think it's called. I think that's the only the second super sticker we've ever had. But thank you very much for that. That's awesome. Dan W. says, wish I had your head of hair. Curly locks. Thank you. At least I have nice hair. I have cross eyes and I look like Shrek, but that's okay. Other than that, everything's fine. I'm just as God made me, sir. I do want to give a rundown of our folks uh, who have super chatted today. And, you know, I love everybody on the chat and everybody on the show, but I love you guys the most. Uh, Jeff H., Fat Crack times two, Jazzy Joe times five. Unbelievable. Second straight week that you've gone off, Jazzy Joe, and I thank you very much for that. Uh, all you got to do is just be here and hang out, dude. You don't have to do all that, but, I mean, appreciated. It's totally appreciated. Uh, Nick S., my man, need to check out, uh, need to hook up with you at the uh, Tipping Point ASAP, although I think our friend Justin's sick right now. I don't know if we want to go hang out with him right now. Uh, Sparrow Empire. A multi super chatter today. Thank you again. You're always here for us, and it's appreciated very much. Spread attack U18, uh, my man with the wife who thinks it's a report card. Appreciate you, bro. Canoe man, uh, as always. What can I say about canoe man? Great chatter, great super chatter. Always here. Uh, yeah, and hornacious. I think hornacious. You've got to have the longest run of super chatting in the history of the super chats because, like, every show you're always here, and it's been going on since like the Oregon game or even. Somewhere in that range. So thank you very much for your support. Corny Mofo says Super Chatters are the best. I mean, they really are. They're, they're, they're on a different level. They're on a different plane. Uh, let's see. Solo Tiger correctly notes that God did not make me with frosted tips. That is true. That is true. I didn't have frosted tips. I don't have frosted tips now either. You can see it's like colored all the way through. But uh, one thing about it, though, I did have my mom was uh, she did. Well, I called it bleaching at the time. Bleached my hair. Uh, when I was younger. Stoop up in the house, my man. Stoop up is also one, like Cornacious, been here like all the way through football season too. I mean, I appreciate all you guys. I'm just saying. Stoop up's old school. Thank you. Says something for the tip jar. Hashtag WDE. Thank you, Stoop up. Appreciate you. Uh, everybody's trying to hotbox Jazzy into sharing his bunker name, and I think he already did, didn't he? Let's see. Hey, Ben, thank you. Thank you for jumping in. Ben B with a late super chat here. Appreciate that. I don't like the idea of people hotboxing people for their bunker handle. If they want to share it, then share it. If they don't, let's let's not do that. We're going to have a long list of super chatters for next week's show. We had a lot of support today. Thank you, guys. Let's see. Jazzy Joe says, Blake, Canoe Man, and Corny are all my dogs, but y'all are my fam, fam. <laughs> And now Corny says, love you, Jazzy. Man, I feel like we've made a love connection here, guys. Thanks. I'm glad this is uh, this is all working out really well. You know, the first time we did a show like that where I just pretty much interacted with the chat folks, I was I was really worried about it. We did that in Kentucky because I couldn't actually get the, the, the phone working. And it's just kind of grown like this. I don't know. I like interacting with you guys on the chat. I hate it when I have to get on the horn. And we take a lot of calls. And I like doing that. It's fun to take calls, too, because I get to put a voice with a name and stuff. But then I miss all the chats, and there will be times when we would take, during the football season, six calls in a row, and I'd be on the phone for 25 minutes, and then I would miss all the chatting going on, and I hated that. So I don't miss any now, and uh, it's really cool. Jazzy Joe says his handle, by the way, is x251xgmoney, if you guys want to check him out. I don't recall that handle being a big deal on the bunker, but I would love to see it more. Maybe you should change it. I tell you what, if you DM me, I'll change it. We can move, We can change it to Jazzy Joe or really anything you want. 
if you'd like to change it, I can be the man to do that for you. Uh, also, do want to shout out, I already did, Ben B, uh, for jumping in with the late super chat there. Thank you very much for that. I don't know what this means, Solo Tiger. You see, hot boxing is never a bad call. <sighs> it can be, depending on your definition of hot boxing. It's not always a pleasure. Leave it at that. And we never got a picture of any puppies. Maybe we should do that for the next show. You can, uh, hey, DM me uh, if you want to talk about some puppies and you, there's some puppies you guys want to see. Let me know. Let's see what I can do. Blake D says, that separates you from a lot of streamers, Jay, that you interact a lot with the viewers. It's great quality and breeds loyal viewers. Thank you. I haven't even thought of that. I mean, I just kind of do it because... I'll tell you what, though, seriously, I mean, since we're just talking, it's late in the show. If you guys want to click off, I won't be upset because I know we're not talking about basketball anymore. But I do watch streamers some. Uh, I love playing FIFA. I'm like the oldest FIFA player on the planet. But I love it. And um, I've got this thing where, like, I don't know if you guys play FIFA, but, like, you can collect cards on there, and I trade, and I'm on a Discord, and we all talk about trading and prices and all this stuff. It's really nerdy, but I have a really good team. And uh, where was I going with this? Oh, and I watch streamers. There's lots of FIFA streamers, and uh, my favorite is a guy named Castro1021. I love Castro. Um, he He's a little different than I am. He does a lot of yelling and screaming, but um, I think Castro is awesome, and he he's always trying to get up with the chatters and stuff, although his chat goes really, really fast. It's hard to keep up, but uh, the the super chatters for him, the way it works on his channel is, you know, like you guys give me a um, like a message with your super chat, and I always read it to you guys as part of it. But his are going so fast, it'll actually read it automatically on the screen. And so that's how he kind of interacts with people. But it's pretty funny. They always rag on him for, for <laughs> they always say he's fat and stuff. And, I mean, I guess Castro maybe six years ago was a little bit overweight. But, I mean, just normal looking dude now. And they always rag it on him for eating McDonald's and being fat and stuff. And Yeah, I, I love those chats, man. I, I do. I just love them. A good streamer is a lot of fun, man. I don't know. It's weird. So, like, if we sat here for the next hour and just talked shit about whatever, you know, not Auburn, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there would be ten people in the bunker, at least five, that would be bitching because can't watch the stream, you guys don't even talk about Auburn. Be like, well, we know that. We weren't talking about Auburn because we didn't want to talk about Auburn anymore. We'd spend an hour and a half talking about it, and then we went another direction. And they get mad. All right, Jazzy Joe, so on the bunker... My name is JG Tate, and so you just click on my user profile, and then it says, like, start a conversation, and you just send me a message, and then I answer you. You can also send me a, uh, an email. Uh, I have a, a link uh, below. It's like in my little tagline on the bunker. Send me an email, and I'll, I'll hook you up that way too, whichever way is best for you. I'm not going to say it out loud what it is here because – I don't know what kind of Russian bots would be going through this, but here, I'll just, I'll just type it out for you. Hold on. There. Send me an email there, Jazzy, and I'll get you, I'll get you set up. Just send me um, your handle, like what it really is, and then what you want, and I'll handle it from there. Corny Mofo says, Jazzy, try at J has sexy hair. Very funny. I know that you're jealous, and that's cool. You also seem surprised that I have a life beyond this. Uh, Declan Yearwood jumps in here late and says, been playing FIFA since 98. I was, I, you've been playing longer than I have. Uh, when will the SEC start men's soccer? I don't know. I don't think they will. Due to Title IX, I think when you add, I mean, how many scholarships do you need in soccer? 20? You probably need more than that. No, nah, they wouldn't do 20, would they? I mean, I know you need 11, but they don't, like in baseball, they don't give you a bunch of scholarships for, like, there's very few players on the baseball team like at Auburn or anywhere that are on full athletic scholarship because you just can't afford to do it. I don't know how many they get. It's like 11 and a third or something like that, and so they end up having to dice up all the scholarships. And maybe a kid that was projected to be a first or second rounder who ends up coming to school, maybe he would get a full ride, but they have to kind of slice and dice them, and I don't even know. So let's say you added 15 for soccer or 12. That just creates an imbalance that you would be really hard to overcome. And there was talk like – uh, God, it's probably been 10 years ago that Auburn was going to add sand volleyball, which I was a big proponent of. I thought that would be a really cool idea. And it was going to be a way for them to add more girls' scholarships, but it was really only going to be like eight. 
it was going to be six to eight because normally there are teams of two, and usually you have three teams of two, so it's only six. And you can also have maybe two more just kind of rotating. But they ultimately decided not to do that. 85 scholarships for football kills things like soccer. That is, that's the absolute truth. I mean, that's just part of it. I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I mean, as, you know, the father of a daughter who she's not going to be playing soccer in college, but she could have uh, at one point in her life if she had cared enough. Um, I'm glad to see women, women's sports that don't make a lot of money still getting great opportunities. They should. Uh, it's just 85 scholarships for football changes things. Okay, Jazzy Joe now says his handle is Joe Motion. Okay. TD says George W. is the one who could have corrected the football imbalance. He didn't because he has two daughters. Well, one of them is really hot, so it's worth it. Maybe you guys like Barbara better. I don't know. I'm not talking about Grandma Barbara. Barbara. I'm talking about the one that's like, you know, whatever, 40. She's thinner, thinner than uh, Jenna, and she's got darker hair. But I think she's like a lawyer. I don't know. You might be into that. Sparrow Empire says, you just need to change the title of the stream if you wanted to talk about off-topic stuff, JJ. Plenty of channels do that all the time. Yeah, that's just going too far into it for me. I, I never really noticed if they're changing the names of the channels or whatever. I mean, I haven't said it Auburn Athletics. Just because I had it as Auburn football, and then people were like, well, wait, you're doing basketball now. I was like, shit, okay, we'll do Auburn athletics. I guess it could have been Auburn sports. That would have made sense, wouldn't it? But I don't know, I didn't. I kind of did it based on uh, what the search terms are for people that are searching for our videos. Yeah. Let's see, Corny says she's hot and likes to drink. <laughs> Sounds that's like a winner to me. I like the sound of that. Paul W. says, let's talk politics. Just kidding. I already made that mistake on the bunker. Is that Were you the one that started the thread about the uh, commercials? There were a lot of political commercials on the Auburn-Iowa State telecast today because um, there's a lot going on in Iowa, obviously, and they were figuring that a lot of Iowans will be watching the Iowa State game, so that's why they were targeting that particular broadcast. Um, you won't see that in the uh, the next game against Ole Miss, so that's kind of a one-and-done some people were a little bit rustled over that, but that's okay. Hmm. Trying to see if there's anything else here. Do not change the name of the channel, the name of the stream. Oh, okay, where it says, like, brain drain we're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't know, man. Canoe Man says the, the owner of AuburnSports.com might get upset if you use that name. <laughs> It's also, there's an actual bonus, though, because whenever I go on certain other streams, uh, usually some of the other rival streams I'll jump on, and uh, it, it says Auburn Athletics, and so people think it's the official. Uh, I'm not trying to masquerade as the official account, um, but because they get a check mark and I don't, but um, the people will think it is. I'll just let them think it. I think the old Miss people know by now that it's me, but. TD says, I have to say I do miss how Jacobs enunciated athletics. <laughs> I don't miss Jay Jacobs too much, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. There was a time when I really liked Jay, and then then I didn't. I mean, he lied to our face about softball in a way that is just a deal breaker for me. Um, I just never could get over that he's like the guy being so evangelistic, and then he's the guy who's lying to our face. and then he's And then he kind of talks his way out of it. By being like, well, I wasn't as forthcoming as I should have been. And it's like, to me, there's like, it's a binary equation. You're either telling the truth or you're not telling the truth. It's a one or a zero. And to say, well, I wasn't as forthcoming as I should have been. Like, you're trying to turn this into a white or black and then a gray area. And there's not. You either told me the truth or you didn't. Well, me and James. And he lied. And maybe he thinks, well, I had no other choice. But we had no other choice. Because we knew we knew what the deal was. We knew there was an investigation going on. And when we asked you about it, you should have been like, well, fuck. I got to talk about it now. I'm not going to talk about the players involved or the coach involved, but I will discuss that there is an investigation going on. I don't know. Canoe Man says, could you do the next drain completely in Gus's voice? I don't think I can. I, I, 
we're in a period of time right now where I don't hang out with Gus as much. I, I was texting with him last night, but I don't talk to him as much. And so I kind of lose a little bit of what he sounds like. I mean, the, the usual standbys, you know, like, no, there's no doubt. Nah, he's pretty big. I mean, he's a guy that's really good for us. I mean, I can do that stuff. But, like, to do a whole show in it, I need to be around him for a couple months and just hear him a lot, you know. Is Warwick in the house, really? Is that the real Warwick, or is that Warwick space underscore? I can't remember if Warwick uh, just had a straight-up name. I don't know why you'd have to change Warwick to something different, but somebody thought that you were a girl. I don't know why they would think this, especially Love the Cats, because he knows who you are. He met you. Jazzy Joe with another late, another one. That's now six, Jazzy Joe. Says, I sent you an email coming to the bunker. So you've gone from I had this one handle to I had this other handle to I'm going to start on the bunker now. <laughs> but we're glad to have you. Whether it's on the chat or if it's actually in the bunker, it'd be great. You do need to bring back Jay Jacobs' voices from time to time. Of course. Well, we definitely want to do that, JG. As you say you're Catholic, right? Does that mean you worship Mary? No, it doesn't actually. Well, that's what I was told. Well, you were wrong. Are you Catholic? Because I am. And I just got indoctrin indoctrinated. I just went through uh, the indoctrination about five years ago when he asked me this question. Like I had to pass a test. I know that we do not pray to Mary. We pray for her intercession on our behalf or the behalf of others. But we do not pray to Mary. Well, that's not how I understand it. I'm like, well, you're not Catholic. And I am. So I'm the expert on this. Okay? Can you just back off a little bit? Thank you. Okay, this uh, chat's getting a little weird. Come on, Solo. Bring it back in, buddy. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. Uh, TD does warn Joe that there will be a hazing period. You can stave that off, though, if you just be cool. You can kind of just you can limit it to one thread. Uh, Jazzy Joe says with that Bill Clinton. Actually, Jay and Bill Clinton share some commonalities when it comes to their voice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty big. I mean, the funnel cakes, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but we, we have nine funnel cake stands. Nine. Okay, you can get funnel cakes anywhere in Jordan Hair. <laughs> hey, have you noticed that, like, the Wi-Fi doesn't work, Jay? Because I think that would be more valuable. Yeah, but we've got nine funnel cake stands, JG. But about the Wi-Fi? Nine. Nine. And we've got a big scoreboard now. And the Wi-Fi? Wi the Wi-Fi still doesn't work. You ever seen these commercials when they go, Auburn University is a national leader in wireless technology. And you're like, well, how come when I go to Jordan Hare, I can't get anything to come through on my phone, like, ever? Ever? And I had a conversation with a dude when I was going to the Missouri game, like, three years ago in Columbia. I sat next to a dude who was, a uh, like, a Verizon network systems analyst, and he was familiar with, like, large-scale situations, and I was like, how come this shit never works in Jordan-Hare? This is three years ago, and he goes, well, they're, they're changing some of the stuff there, and they're adding some stuff there, and I bet you next time you're in Jordan-Hare, you'll notice it's better. It's not better. I know that you guys are all dealing with that, too. Stu Pup says my Jay Jacobs voice cracks my wife up. I, I mean, I don't know if it's right on or not. It's been a while since I've talked to Jay, but uh, it does remind me of Bill Clinton, honestly. I mean, when you hear him talk, and the problem with Jay, it's just like, I just really didn't like the fact that he tried to blend his job with religion. He, I thought he did it too much. And so he would be like, you know, we're just going to let God kind of show us the way. And I'm like, well, listen, man, I, I do a lot of praying myself. I try to stay prayed up as well, but I, I'm not sure that covering up the softball investigation is doing justice to what you should be doing religiously. You know, I don't think you're following in anybody's footsteps, Jesus's or otherwise by covering up an investigation. I feel like those are incongruent. And, yeah. And, of course, he had the all-time classic when he when he finally did decide to come clean about the investigation. And he was like, I know you're, I know you're not saying... I, I can't even do it right now. JG, I know you're not saying... I can't do it. I know you're not satisfied, but are you good? It's like, no, we're not good, okay? But thank you, thank you. And then he took a fake phone call. He goes, oh, oh, my phone. Hold on, hold on, guys. And like, there's not, there, it wasn't ringing. Hello? Oh, yeah, oh, hold on, guys. Sorry. Hope you... 
Come on, man. That's like 1980s move right there. Canoe Man says, does, J- does JJ wear jorts? I don't think JJ wears jorts. I don't think so. I've never hung out with him on the beach, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Corny Mofo. You know, this is probably the truest statement you can make about Jay Jacobson. I give you full credit for saying this, Corny. He says, JJ was a good man, but he shouldn't have run a multi-million dollar business. I, I tend to agree. I, I am giving Jay hell because I think he lied his ass off about that soft. Well, we know he lied his ass off about that softball investigation which is bogus. And if he had just been a college administrator telling a tall tale to a reporter, it's, it certainly wouldn't stand out, right? It happens all the time. I don't feel like Alan lies to me, but I also work harder maybe now than I did earlier to not put him in situations where he has to lie to me, okay? To be fair. And I was probably a little rougher on Jay than I should have been. But he's, our, he's probably a pretty good guy. I mean, he and his wife, Angie, they have been foster parents and they continue to do that and man that's a really tough gig you have to really that's a very selfless endeavor to do that and they were all in on that so i got to give him a lot of credit for that and he is married to a very quality woman and you got to give him credit for that um i think that says something about him as well so he's he is he's a good dude i think i i I don't really want to hang out with him but i think he is a good man but I thought he was way over his head. I, I don't necessarily think he was over his head when he started because in 2004, it was still kind of like this provincial deal where it's like the good old boys and going to win some football games. You know what I mean? And then when the SEC Network came along, it went from, you know, I, I don't I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the budget for that organization for Auburn Athletics, I bet it's gone up 250%. I mean, there's so much more on the line now. It just got away from him. And he started hiring a bunch of deputies, some of whom were good and some of whom were sucky. And it just, it, it almost was like he wasn't even really part of the show anymore. And it it just got away from him. Sometimes I think it gets away from Alan, but for a different reason. I, I think Alan's got control of, of everything in a way that Jay didn't. But I also think that Alan kind of wants to be behind the scenes guy like he doesn't want to be out he doesn't want to lead from the front he wants his coaches to lead from the front he wants his student athletes to lead from the front because he thinks that everything they're doing is promoting the kids and their athletic accomplishments which is a really noble way to look at it but I think that the reality is that Auburn people want to know their athletic director they want their athletic director to kind of be like the admiral of the ship I mean I know that BP is always going to be the star as long as he's at Auburn and I think he will be for a while because of the way he is you know but I still think people want Alan to hey I know Alan Green I know I've heard Alan Green talk I've seen Alan Green I've shook his hand I've seen his vision for what they're trying to do I feel like he should lead from the front more and he doesn't but I still think Alan's a really good leader I think he's uh, I think he's good for Auburn he turned a lot of people off with that budget cut thing I think he's just trying to get some stuff through people's head that you just can't spend money out the ass forever. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I've never run a billion-dollar organization, whatever, it's $100 million. Let's see. We got some tips coming through from Canoe Man for our new member, Jazzy, who's signing up. Let's see. I, I missed tip one. Let's see if I can find it. I missed tip one, Canoe Man. Tip two is talk about (laughs) – these are not good tips. Talk about how much you love Gus as often as possible. That is definitely a good way to get you shit on in the bunker for sure. Uh, Tip three, Jazz. Mention to Jay Lee that Auburn had an elite defense (laughs) several times per week. I made the mistake of telling Jay Lee that, and he got on me good. He still does. When we're on the uh, rundown, I always try to weave it that direction at some point, and he gets it. He gets a stern look on his face. We've been kind of playing with the idea of taping that so you guys could see the show because we have a lot of fun, but it's hard to tape something where we're all sitting around a table. I mean, ESPN can do that because they got, like, however many cameramen to do it. But Tip number four, buy your tickets from War Eagle Sam. Or who was that cat that uh, was left that guy hanging earlier this year? I forget his name. The dude down in Mobile. I forgot his handle. But we we did finally get it worked out, but it took months. Oh, look who showed up. Jeff C. 
Outstanding. Jeff says, hey, guys, been out. What did I miss? No, not much. Warrex says, Look like, looks like my man JGT has some fresh tips. These are not tips, bro. If they were tips, it would be just like the tips would be colored, but I have it. it's all the way colored through, so stop with that. You should know better. I feel like your hair might be colored. I didn't want to say anything. Jimpty, thank you, TD. That's exactly who it was, Jimpty. Jimpty was the guy who sold tickets. No, he yeah, he sold tickets to a guy, and then the guy never got the money. And he kept haranguing him, and he couldn't get the money and couldn't get the money, and then I finally felt like I had to get involved, even though I didn't want to get involved. And one thing led to another, and we ended up getting the guy paid. It took like a year. Shouldn't have taken anything like that. And then Jimpty uh, kind of slithered out into the abyss. I, I mean, I would imagine he's still here. I was trying to help him get another name, and I couldn't really get it done. And I don't know. Just kind of decayed. Jeff C. says, what up, JG? Not much. We were talking about basketball earlier, but we we're almost two hours into the show now, so we're, we're long off basketball. We talked about football a little bit. talked about Title IX a little bit. We talked about Jay Jacobs. We talked about Alan Green. Uh, pretty much everything else. Canoe Man's going through and giving tips on how to mess up your uh, E cred on the bunker. Actually, tip number six is do not sell tickets to Jimpty. That's probably a good idea, actually. Jimpty. Mm -hmm. Although tip number five of frosting your tips may not work. I don't think that's something that a lot of folks do. <laughs> TD says, no, he bought the tickets and didn't send the money. I just know that the other guy was owed money, and then Jimpty ended up paying it, but I felt like I had to lean on him, and I shouldn't have had to do that. It shouldn't have taken that. And I, I felt weird about it, you know, because I don't feel like it's my job to referee, like, private transactions that are going on out there, but that one pissed me off, and I did get involved, and we got it worked out. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Although Jimpty disappeared. Maybe Jimpty is somebody else now. Maybe that's actually Rice's account or something, a burner account or whatever. <sighs> it happens sometimes. Now we're going down the bunker lore uh, vertical, as the kids would say. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're at two hours now, guys, for real. <laughs> TD says it was the craziest situation ever. It really wasn't that crazy. I mean, it was crazy, but we've had worse. I feel like there was stuff going on before I got to the site that was really, really crazy. Uh, I know about some stuff that went on some guy-girl stuff going on that before I got to the bunker that I, I missed, and I'm kind of glad I did. You know, I just don't really... I don't want to get into, like, relationship drama on the bunker or anything like that. I mean, I don't mind if you guys post about it. We see, you know, like once a week we get a, hey, I'm getting divorced, I need some advice. Those, I mean, that's that's fine. But And uh, I think CB Devine was talking about it the other day, that he was looking for... Uh, uh, divorce lawyer Rex in Montgomery because his, his son-in-law bounced and I thought you know, for the first time in my life I thought man what would happen to me because you know my daughter's 17 almost 18 now and she's not getting married anytime soon at least I hope not but the day's coming you know and if my son-in-law or whatever just pulls some shit and like bounces I mean it's like what do you do like god that would make me mad Thomas H. says, great show as always, JG. If you've got time, I'd love to call in. Hey, what's up, man? Um, You're absolutely welcome to call in. I haven't been looking, though. Do you have the number? I, mean, I can call you if you really want to hop on. Here, text me real quick. I'll text you. Where are you at? Here you are. Holler at me if you want to hop on. I'll stay on a little bit longer if you want to hop. Corny Mofo says, two hours is enough. People love you and I like you. Thanks for making that delineation, Corny. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, if Jay head wants to hop on, though, I think people uh, people in the know who know who that is would be interested to hear what Jay head has to say. All right. We're going to add Jay head here. Let's do it. Um, I don't really want to have y'all... Oh, God. I did that again. I do that all the time. Let's see. I don't think I have you typed in here, though. <coughs> oh, man. Hold on. Oh, man. 
Alright. Oh, wait. I'm fixing to call you, bro. I got you. JG, what's going on? What's up, J-Head? How you been? Oh, I can't complain. Can't complain, especially when we get another win today. Hell yeah. That was uh... nice to see. Yeah, nice to see Bruce and the boys pull one off, even though we played a little sloppy there towards the end. But I think that just goes. The team's maturing, and, and that's just kind of part of it. Uh, just learning how to play, I guess, all four quarters. And <clears throat> just... Hopefully we can get another big win against Ole Miss and then maybe a big win against Kentucky and kind of see where that leads us. But I uh, didn't get a chance to see either listen to all of the show, but uh, from the part that I did, you guys are killing it per usual. Love what you guys are bringing to the table. Thank you. Obviously the, uh, the football part of it um, with the coaching search and everything else, what do you, uh, what do you think is going to happen with, with the DB aspect of it? Yeah. So we were talking about that earlier a little bit, but, you know, Addison, about, a, about probably a day ago, I thought Addison was in the catbird seat of that one, but now I think they're going to take their time, Jay Head, and, and I think he's in this thing, and I think he's actually going to go out on the trail and recruit a little bit for him as a de facto member of the staff, but I think they're going to take their time with this, and I think it's going to be the guys we talked about before, which is Addison, uh, Blake Gideon, uh, Al Pogue, and Zach Etheridge, I think, are the four guys to keep an eye on at this point. That would be my guess. I couldn't agree with you. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And those are the names that I've that I've mostly heard. Uh, and I actually got a tip from two guys that I'm friends with. One's a coach in Georgia, one's a coach in Alabama, and both of them just rave about Blake and Addison, for that matter. And, and they're high on Al too. Uh, not as much. They don't know as much with Zach. I think he's a little bit younger, but. Uh, they were familiar with both Addison and Blake from Blake's time at Georgia State and Addison when he was coaching at Furman and before that at Tuscaloosa. Um, found out. I guess I did a little bit of research on it, and of course Addison uh, or Ellis Johnson, our former defensive coordinator at uh, at Auburn, Addison was a GA underneath him, raved about him. I think uh, very similar to when Will Muschamp was here at Auburn as a GA underneath Brother Bill, they allowed Addison to coach, you know, his own position. So I think he coached cornerbacks pretty much as a GA for Ellis when he was when he was there at South Carolina, was a defensive coordinator at Tusculum, and then at Furman was on verge of being their defensive coordinator when he left them to come here, and of course. Blake has done a phenomenal job where he's been at Georgia State and before that, I think, at Western Carolina, Louisiana Lafayette, and now at Houston as a special teams guy. But uh, if we happen to luck into, into Blake and or promote Addison from within, I think it's going to be a grand slam from a guy, you know, I mean, from two younger guys that are on the verge that can really kind of learn from Wesley and then uh, obviously soak up a little bit of Kevin's tutelage. And if they go the way of Al, personally, I'm a major fan of, of Al Pogue. I uh, want to make sure that I put that on record. I think it, uh, he brings a lot to the table, what we lost with Woodson, as far as a guy that just has that swagger to him. And that's, that's the kind of guy you want in the trail for you. That's the kind of guy that DBs resonate with. Yeah. Um, I think you get a lot of that from McGriff right now. But having another guy, especially in a loaded, loaded class in the state of Alabama in 2021, that would be a huge pickup. So any one of those three, I think we'd be in good hands. I sure do. I love me some Al Pug now. When I was a young newspaper reporter, he was coming up at St. Jude and then at Carver here in Montgomery. And, I mean, he did some really good coaching there. And he became a valuable member of the staff at Troy. And he's been just exactly what you think at West Virginia, a good recruiter and a very high-energy guy. So, yeah, I think he's good, too. I, you're really good with any of those three, really. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Of course, you know, Al knows people from all across the state. He's from Mobile, um, coached in Montgomery he's coached in the Wiregrass area where I'm from uh he just he's made a name for himself and I think he would be really great but like I said with the other two I don't think you can go bad with either of those three and who knows you know it, Kevin's really kind of driving this and that's what became evident to me initially I thought this would be a really quick hire that Gus would settle in on Al and or promote Addison from within but the, like you said the more this kind of <clears throat> I guess as it came along is it became apparent that Kevin's really driving this and he's yeah. going to be very thorough and he's going to wait until he can speak to all the candidates that he wants to speak with. And that'll probably, to be honest, be after the February signing period, because a lot of these guys contractually, they're not going to be able to leave anyway. Um, and let me say this about Marcus real quick. 
I wanted to get on and say this about him. I saw some guys kind of wondering why he would leave now, why he didn't leave before, kind of bagging him for leaving at this point. Marcus Woodson did it the right way. He had an opportunity to, and I think you've discussed this, had an opportunity to leave back in December when Norvell first pitched it to him and he turned him down, whether it be the money or whatever else. But he stayed, got us through the early signing period, locked up some guys. And then when he did leave, he actually took the job. What was told to me is he took the job on Tuesday um, during the day and then spent that day calling recruits, specifically those that he'd been recruiting for Auburn, told them basically Auburn's a wonderful place, you need to stay there, and, you know, talked to his own players in person because he wanted them to know, you know, why he was leaving, what was going on there, and that it wasn't anything to do with Malzahn and his stability and everything to do with the fact uh, of his relationship with Norvell and the opportunity to coach the entire defensive backfield. It was just kind of a progressive move for him uh, because he's got goals of being a defensive coordinator. He's got goals of being a head coach. And when you're able to take on more responsibility, it just speaks you know, that much more of a volume of your work to be able to promote yeah. and do those things. So I, I do want to commend Coach Woodson for the way he left, for the work that he put in while he was here and the way he represented Auburn. He's a good dude, straight up. Um, we also learned this week, Jay Head, that, that Kevin had signed a new three-year deal that was going to pay him about $2.5 million a year, making him the highest-paid assistant in college football. Your thoughts about uh, that amount of money for, for what he's done at Auburn? Well, Kevin is phenomenal at what he does. I mean, should he necessarily – is he, is he worth 2.5? I mean, that, that's hard for me to say that's subjective. I think that Kevin is – Really great at what he does. He relates to the kids extremely well. It it sends it sends a message to you know our recruits that Gus is going to be here, that stability and continuity is going to continue. Now, obviously, um, if you get into a situation where you buy, got to buy Gus out, then that puts you kind of in an awkward spot with Kevin because you're going to have a major buyout with him too. Oh yeah. I'm praying that we don't ever get to that point uh, because that would be a ton of money that you got to shell out. But I guess there are conspiracy theorists out there that would say, well, that just makes a natural progression for you to kind of move Kevin as a way to save money if you did have to separate from Gus, that you could move him to the head coach role with the amount of money that you're paying him right there and have him kind of be a caretaker for a couple of years. I don't believe that's legitimate. Um, I really think this was a way that, you know, Gus wanted to reward Kevin for his loyalty to him. Uh, I think that they believe that continuity is the best way and that Kevin really represents an Auburn defense. You know, we haven't played, in my opinion. I, listen, I love defense underneath the Tuberville years, but if you want to talk about legitimate, hard-nosed defense, the way Auburn is, you know I mean, the way Pat Dye had it going with Wayne Hall. And I think I, I read a stat the other day that Kevin is now the longest tenure defensive quarter that we've had since Wayne Hall. I did not know that. Interesting. Um, it, it, that's, it, it was amazing to me as well that that is the longest tenure guy that we've had. And it makes sense because if you go back to Tommy's coordinators, I mean, who did we have in the very beginning? I know it flipped over to Gene pretty quickly. Uh, and then after him with Muschamp and then uh, the guy that came in from Iowa State, Paul Rhodes. But I can't even remember who his first defensive coordinator was now. Uh, but I think he felt like he changed DCs every four years or, le or four years or less. Uh, and then obviously – uh, when Gene came in, we had Ted for three years, and then the god awful hire of Brian Van Gorder, and then obviously <laughs> Ellis Johnson with Gus, and then from there, Muschamp for one. And now we're going on what I guess four straight years with Kevin and moving yeah. into year five. He's been doing good work. Hey, it was uh, John Lovett was uh, Toberville's first defensive coordinator. That's right, John Lovett. That's right, I forgot about him. Yes, Canoe Man also got that well, in the chat. It, Go ahead, Jay. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying we had a, one of our chatters, uh, the canoe man, actually figured that out at the same time I did. John Lovett. Nice. Well, I, you know, like I said, I, I think Kevin does a phenomenal job with what he does. I think he's universally respected uh, in the college football community. I know that there, there was some talk that LSU was interested. I mean, I think they're going to end up settling in on their former defensive coordinator. Uh, oh, this up at Youngtown State right now is probably which way Ed's leaning. But there was some talk in the coaching community that they were going to make a pitch to Kevin. So they had to do something. They had to be bold on that end just to make sure. And yeah. I think Kevin's happy at Auburn. I think he's going to be happy with the guy. It, 
mouths on for whatever faults he does or doesn't have on the offensive side of the ball for the accusations of meddling. And look, when you're the head coach, you do what you think is right. But he definitely lets Kevin run that defense 100%. He doesn't get in his way. And I think you've alluded to it. Occasionally, when it comes down to defensive prospects, he might say yes or no, you know, as far as being the ability to offer. But he's got to look at the overall health of his team. And sometimes he gets to make tough decisions. So I don't fault him occasionally for telling Kevin, no, hey, we can't offer this guy because he's got to look out for the offense, defense, right. and special teams. That's fair, I think. And like you said, he strategically, he completely lets Kevin do that. I mean, he doesn't have face any restrictions oh, on that. Yeah, it, well, and, and can you imagine him trying to tell Kevin what to do? <laughs> <laughs> it would not go well. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. No. No, that, that, wouldn't go, that wouldn't go well at all. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm glad that Kevin got the money he got. I mean, College coaching is not what it was 10, 15 years ago. It's a money business, um, and it's only going to give you more, obviously, with the new contract that the SEC Network is going to be picking up. When does that start? I guess 2022, 2023? Yeah, two more years, yeah. Two, when that, years. It, it, you know, I mean, it's going to be even more money. So I think some of that's taken into account um, that if you do have to make a buy on anything like that, that, it, it, that we're doing a good job of budgeting our money right now. I did want to touch base back on one thing that you stated uh, with regard to the uh, the 10% budget cut yeah. uh, that Alan Green put in. Part of that is, you know what I mean, is looking long term at the health of, you know, at the health and revenue of all of our sports and making sure that we have money to do things like this, to reward guys for the great work that they put in, to be able to, I mean, you're going to be limited in some of the things that you can do, but when you save money, when you cut that 10% across and make sure that you have that surplus that you need, you can afford to pay Kevin still $2.5 million. So that long-term strategic view by him, uh, it, you know, I mean, it, it, it affords you the opportunity to do stuff like this, and yeah. hopefully it will afford us the opportunity to build that uh, Auburn football complex that. Um, they just can't seem to find a consensus on where they're going to build. Have you heard anything recently on that? The last I heard is that they're going to put it on the practice field now. Is that, uh, uh, that, is that what if, you're hearing? If that's what they're going to do, that would be new to me. But that, that's possible. I haven't checked in with Alan on that in a couple months just because it's like such a weird con- – it's, it's been a weird deal behind the scenes, as you know. Yeah. It, I mean, I think the consensus is that they're going to build it. The question is you yeah. have – and that's always been the problem – you know, with Auburn to a degree, you got a lot of hands, a lot of people that want to get in, in, in their ideas across, and I think that's great. And Alan is phenomenal at being a consensus builder and getting people on the same page, but they're having a hard time kind of selling in on where they're going to build it. I know they initially talked about putting it over in the old track and then building a bridge or a trail or something of that nature to be able to navigate over to the practice fields. But the most recent thing that I had heard uh, from the one or two people that I actually get a nugget of information from and if anything to do with facilities, told me that the, the thought process is that they may be building on the practice field and then turning a new practice field uh, over there where the track is. All right. I've also heard they were going to destroy Biggio Avenue or Biggio Drive so that there wouldn't even be that, that, that road that goes between where the practice field is and where Beard Eves is. They would just make that all space right there. So. Yeah, I've heard the same thing, and they, I know they're deep into the design phase right now, and they're trying to come to an idea of what they're going to do there, and as soon as they do that, hopefully we can get started. I know that they've raised the majority of the money, what they've got to do. Um, I'm just hoping that we don't have a setback with Gus, and then some of that money gets pulled. I mean, I don't think that they are. I think they understand that for the long-term health of the football program, this has got to be done. Um Otherwise, you're, you know, I mean, regardless of what you do with Coach Malzahn, you're setting yourself up for failure if you don't do this just because everybody else has kind of moved in this direction. Yeah. Jay Head, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, get on the horn, bro. Oh, Jay, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, once again, love the show. Love what you guys are doing over there at Auburn Sports. And uh, just really enjoy being part of the uh, the community there. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, be good, all right? Hey, you too, buddy. See you, man. Jay Head, Bunker Legend. The man knows his business. He's uh, really good at pretty much knowing everything that's going on, honestly. <laughs> he's, he's pretty damn connected. Uh, it's rare that he contacts us with a, a nugget here or there, and it's and he's wrong. Um, and I can't remember him ever doing it. So when he speaks, you guys ought to be listening for show for show. Uh, I don't know what you guys are doing in the chat, but that was crazy. 
Talking about jive talking. Oh, it's because of the Gibb brothers. The brothers Gibb. The Bee Gees. Canoe Man says taking out BGO drive is the only way to do it, in my opinion. Otherwise, facilities are too far away to be practical. I agree. And the first time I thought about that, when Alan brought it up to me, that they would just dig up BGO, I was like, wait a minute, what? I mean, because I use that road a lot. But you just have to get around. You have to get used to it. Not having it. You'd have to uh, attack, I guess, or approach that, uh, the, what I call the football parking deck. I guess you'd have to come around. Well, I guess if you're coming from the top, but I usually come from the bottom. Uh, just go through that parking lot, I guess, and come out by um, by baseball. It's still a long way to go. Figure out where the, what they're going to do with that. But they, it's weird to me. They just keep fussing it. Just, uh, maybe we should put it here. Maybe we should put it there. I don't know if I want a bridge. Maybe we should take a bridge. Maybe we could take the road out. Like it's just, just pick something and let's get going, man. Jesus, like it's it's got to happen. We all know that the football complex has got to get built ASAFP. So let's quit dawdling and let's get this thing done. My opinion. All right, I feel like we've had we've done it all, guys. We've said it all. We've had Jay head on. We've had B Matt on. We've had great chats. So many great super chatters. Even had some here late with Ben B jumping in. Unbelievable. Jazzy Joe with another one late. Declan jumping in during the FIFA chats, the FIFA talk. We'll wrap it up there. Our longest basketball show ever. You could argue it wasn't basketball, really, because we, we've been talking about other stuff for the last hour. But anyway, Canoe Man says we need a master plan. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Still don't have it. Although I know, I don't think Jay ever cared. I don't, I don't see any value in that. But I know Alan does, and they, they'll get it straightened out. All right, we'll wrap it up, guys. Again, our next show, uh, Auburn's got Ole Miss Tuesday night, eight o'clock tip. I know that kind of sucks. Eight o'clock Central Time. Our friends in the Eastern Time Zone. That's going to be nine o'clock. Um, but we'll be on after that. Don't know how long we'll go, but we will definitely be on uh, on the air, so to speak. And if I would love for you guys to join us. Uh, if you get a chance to do that. And, of course, we'll be getting ready for the big game, the home game against Kentucky next Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock, the Outlive game. The game day is going to be here, ESPN, the whole thing. So that will be huge. See you guys on Tuesday. And uh, until then, behave yourself, and let's make good decisions out there with our drinking, with the things that we say to each other. Let's be nice. All right, guys, seriously. I've been nice. You've been nice. Let's all be nice. Till then, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Peace.